and that law enforcement can collect DNA wherever they can access it. U.S. District Judge Lee Yeekel has ruled that a law requiring abortion clinics to be held to hospital operating standards is unconstitutional. Judge Eagle's decision was a victory for the clinics that sued after Texas Governor Rick Perry signed the bill in 2013. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reason books free by calling 800 800- 686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, Labor Day, September 1st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com the Liberty Beat. Bitcoin entrepreneur and advocate Charlie Shrem will plead guilty Thursday to federal money laundering charges. Shrem is accused of helping users of the online marketplace Silk Road to buy drugs with Bitcoin. He was arrested in January of this year and has since been on house arrest at his parents' home in New York City. While his plea deal may still include jail time, Shrim is optimistic he will not be put in a cage. He plans to ask the Bitcoin community to write letters of support to the judge who will oversee his sentencing. The Liberty Beat will keep you up to date as his story unfolds. The Washington Post reports that anti-government protesters stormed Pakistan's state television building Monday forcing the channel briefly off the air as they clash with police and push closer to the prime minister's residence. Over the weekend, clashes between protesters and security forces killed three people and wounded hundreds in running street battles in Pakistan's capital, Islamabad. Well, this Friday, September 5th, is Jury Rights Day. Activists across the country will be educating the public about a juror's right to nullify laws they find unjust or immoral. The Fully Informed Jury Association has sent out packets of literature to find your activists nationwide. You can learn more about jury nullification and print your own materials by visiting FIJA.org. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. And support comes from The Corey Moore Show. Live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMoreShow.com and LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, Labor Day, September 1st of 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. McDonald's is now offering bereavement prices and a sexual predator gets tenure. This is the Onion Week in Review. This Wednesday, Samsung announced the release of its brand new really big f-ing television. Representatives for the South Korean electronics manufacturer told reporters at a press conference that the goddamn gargantuan of an electronics product boasted a variety of new features, including being super heavy and having a screen that was probably a hundred f-ing inches wide for all they knew. We here at Samsung think this new product will appeal to today's consumers who are looking for a television that's really really huge. I mean, this thing is built like a f***ing mad truck. You, 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 just, you just really have to see it to believe it. In other news, an important decision is sent up to the company's highest idiot. And an area mother doesn't see why Thai people need to make food so spicy. Today's Onion Review was sponsored by Bamboo Garden, voted the best family-owned Chinese restaurant in Idaho for five years running. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial us up here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Daryl. And Mark. And uh, we're going to go right into your phone calls here because you can join us about anything you want. Doesn't matter what we bring to the table to discuss. Although I have to say we've got some pretty interesting stuff here tonight, including Officer Peach. Darrell will be telling us about Officer Peach and why it was that the police uh, prosecution unit in the UK was refusing to take Officer Peach's statement. Uh, no, they wanted Officer Peach's statement. 
Well, then, then, but then when they finally got it, they didn't they like They were it. mad. They didn't like what they got. That's true. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And also, Mark, you've got a story about a mother who called the police on her son for looking at pornography and also Scottish independence. There's big news in the polling results. It hasn't. The kid was not looking at Scottish independence. The election hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call that pornography. but uh, the Somebody election... felt very independent. I'll give you that. The election hasn't happened yet in uh, in uh, in Scotland, so we'll see what what's going going to transpire. The polling results are very interesting. But first, we go to Hung like Jesus calling us on Skype. You're on Free Talk Live. There, Hung. Good evening. Uh, hey, hey, uh, guys. Um, I want to um, hopefully set the tone for this for this program. Hopefully, you know, um, this uh, this cop in uh, I think it's in California somewhere. That ran over the uh, the one's head of Napster, who just absolutely skated just now. He just skated. He, just, he murdered this man. He was texting and ran this man over and killed him. Ugh. And he just skates. Just completely skates. Now, what I want to well, see I don't know is, if that's murder, technically. It's, it's manslaughter. manslaughter. What, 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 call it whatever you want. Yeah. I want to see I want to see if the people that support these murderous cops that they've been doing all along, that's been killing these unarmed people, I want to see if they're going to get out and support this one the same way. You know, this is the white person that he killed, that he ran over, that he murdered. Call it what you want. He murdered this person. He yeah. was texting. If I'm texting, I kill somebody. I'm going straight to prison. <laughs> yeah, that's the God's honest truth. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I didn't look at the comments on this. I should have gone and hunted down the comments for, you know, the apologist because they're always out there. You know, the police are they've got a tough job and mm. you don't know what it's like to do what they do um, day in and day out. They work with the hardest, the, 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 you know, the worst dreck of human society. But this police officer, just to bring people up to date on it. As I understand the story, I don't have it. Have one of them sitting in front of me. And frankly, the stories are always wrong anyway. But uh, the facts of the case appear to be that he was, uh, he was reading a department text and returning a department text. Oh, that and, makes it better. What's that? Right, he's just doing his that job, man. Yep. Yeah, was he it, on the better. clock when this happened? He was on the clock. Re- in his returning, patrol car. Yeah, in his patrol car, returning a department text, and he ran over the former COO of Napster. Mm-hmm. And so you have, uh, you know, a pretty well-to-do individual uh, that has been, you know, now the rich have been run over. The rich and uh, ethnically advantaged have been run over by uh, one of the king's men. And, right. yep, he got off. Like The cop did. Nothing. He skated. He did just get off. He skated away. What was the excuse for letting him it off? Was a, after- it was a department email, so he was on the clock. He was right. doing what he was supposed to be doing. So so when you kill somebody, when you shoot somebody on the clock, that's different. Well, apparently it's a completely different set of rules for the rest of us versus the police because in a lot of places it's illegal to text while driving. Sure. California um, is one of those yeah. places. So but it's cops okay have for them. Laptops though. sitting right sure. there that they can use while they're driving and yeah. do sometimes. They're professionals, Mark. They're trained at this. Yeah, well, no one can has two sets of eyes. Well, you know, I've been uh, I've been really pissed off about because I mean, they've been doing stuff for the last couple of weeks. It's just been just craziness. These police have been just doing stuff, and and, and none of them has been charged with anything. Of course not. They, it's uh, it's part the of the perks the of the job. You can murder people and get away with it. What is they just uh, they just ruled this the, the one that got choked in New York. Yeah, that was a homicide. It was a homicide. I heard nothing else about it. It was homicide. They murdered this man in the street on camera. Nothing else about it. They had a second one. It was ruled homicide. Nothing else about it. Now we got this one here standing in my face right now. This guy runs this man over while texting, and he skates away. He'll probably get a uh, bonus at the end of the year. I I, I just pulled up an article here from Business Insider that said that the court apparently ruled that he was not negligent because police officers are expected to respond quickly to messages from colleagues. <laughs> are you absolutely serious? That's yeah. yeah. I, I'm reading the sentence from oh, businessinsider.com. Wow. By definition, a text is not important. If it were an important communication, it would come over his two-way radio. It would so come explain over. Explain that to his. Explain that to his family. You know, he was doing his job, and your husband just happened to be in his way. He veered off to the left, and your husband just happened to be in his way. He was doing his job. Understand that. Uh, also so says that— Barry, I mean, shut up. He, he was uh, on the left? Did he get—now, oh, where was he run down? Was he in the middle of the street? Was the he bicycle on the lane. sidewalk? Bicycle it was a lane. bicycle lane. So it was the right. So it says like that uh, the, right, he was. the officer had also been texting his wife 
from his personal phone minutes prior mm. to the crash, but those texts were not thought to have contributed to his inattention while driving. <laughs> Interesting. Of course, of course not. But you know what's going on? What, what needs to happen, what needs to happen is people need to stop. And we need to realize that it's a lot more of us than it is them. Oh, just yeah. Stop doing what it is that we're supposed to do and just do what it is that we want to do. Let's just act like we're all cops. We just do what we want to do. <laughs> and let's just I all love do that idea. Things. We need to get more people who have th those ideas to New Hampshire. So long as doing what you want doesn't include hurting others, well, of course, uh, yeah. then I'm completely fine with it. And I think that what that what that's what that's we need. We were having this conversation today at, uh, at lunch with a visitor in town here in Keene about the idea of, well, you know, can we vote ourselves cha changes? You know, the old vote versus non-vote discussion. I said it doesn't matter if no one votes as long as everybody keeps paying taxes and keeps going along to get along and doing what they're told then we'll keep getting what we've gotten which is more corruption more abuse more destruction and more waste and i'm with you man hung i appreciate your call tonight thanks for bringing that to the table the toll-free number is 855 450 free it's the obedience of people is why things are the, as bad as they are hard to argue if enough people in one place where whether it's, you know, abusive police or bad roads or whatever it is the objections are that people have, if enough people just said, well, that's about it. We're done paying for this. We'll, we'll go ahead and hire our own protection services. We'll take care of ourselves. We'll have a neighborhood watch. We'll take care of ourselves. And if they just decided to stop paying taxes to these people, they couldn't put us all in jail. You really have to ask yourself, I mean, what would be... How, how much worse could it be if you had private protection services? Okay, so consider that you wouldn't have the bill for police any longer. That would come off your property taxes. I don't know what you pay annually for police, but uh, it's— I don't know either. I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't know. But you wouldn't pay that. And then you would have that money left over, and you would have, uh, you know, you'd be able to get some level of protection from some security company out there. I'm assure you, there are dozens of them. Right, they would they would do it right now if you wanted to to pay them, and they're liable to give you a guarantee. Like, hey, if my house gets broken into and my stuff gets taken you'll pay for it or your insurance will cut down um, you know the cost of uh, your insurance because you have special levels of protection those things like this would happen this is obvious so yeah I mean you know private security is a very doable thing now the question is sort of this uh, greater good that police do and I'm willing to say that uh, you know the idea that they'll go down and uh, they'll go out and hunt after murderers and arsonists and rapists and things like that's good and you have to consider that these private security companies would have some effect on that they're going to catch themselves some murderers some rapists and uh, some burglars now they may catch more if there's enough people that use these private protection services, in which case we clearly have a more effective system. I don't know if it costs more or if it costs less, because I do think that police services are, um, you know, that the, the tickets manage to offset some of the costs. So if no, you can send a cop out, here. If you can send, here. wait a second. In New Hampshire, can, they go to the general fund, the state. They, they do, but the, the general, but the state has state police who then issue tickets yeah. so yes every 250 and fifty ticket cost you know is is a but the local cops don't benefit directly from writing tickets not in new, in new hampshire. hampshire but just about every other state they do that's true I mean, there are many states many many towns that essentially are financed like waldo florida yeah but lots of them yeah. that are essentially financed there's one out in colorado that apparently finance they, with tickets yeah with they've, they've tickets. issued more obstructive view uh view tickets than colorado uh boulder and aurora combined excuse me denver uh boulder and aurora combined we'll come back with more you can share your thoughts toll free number is 855 450 free but as long as people keep depending on the police even for things like family matters we'll come back with more this is mark edge of free talk live and i've got something awesome to share with you i've recently joined liberty.me it's an online city devoted to people who love liberty break free of the flame wars and bridge dwelling denizens of facebook you deserve better you deserve a friendly ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world attend live interactive classes with experts on economics finance politics and money access a vast library of books and discuss them 
system with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free. And bring up anything you want. The number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. Daryl. And Mark. Daryl is here courtesy of his website, fpp.cc. You can go get a lot more of Daryl's writings and also link over to his various different uh, audio productions like uh, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio and his almost every single day. Yeah, seven days a week. Seven newscast. days a week. Uh, so very cool. FPP.cc for more of him. And ExpressCoin is where you can go to get Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, and Litecoin. And you can get them all with no transfer fee if you order less than $40 worth and use code FTL. Now, normally when you transfer one form of money into another, there's a fee involved in that. That's sure. pretty standard. Yep. Uh, but ExpressCoin really wants you to check out the world of cryptocurrency. They want you to jump into this. And so up to $40 worth 
Use code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. No transfer fee. Now, when you go above 40 bucks, when you're ready to jump in deeper, uh, it's only 3% transfer fee last time I looked, and that was the best price I'd ever seen on transferring money from one currency to Bitcoin. So, great deal. Yeah, and I think that... Um you never know where Bitcoin is going to go, right? Like oh, two it's years, five hundred bucks today. It's at five about five hundred bucks today. It's been as high as a thousand. It's been as low as you know. We we added it a buck. Mm -hmm. um, so you never know what's going to happen. But it's possible that we will see a world in the next decade or two that cryptocurrencies are the main reserve currency. It's possible. And my question to you is: Is it worth getting one Bitcoin? Because there's only going to be 21 million bitcoins, mm -hmm. and if you had 21 millionth of the money that the U.S. dollars that are on the planet right now, you would be one rich mamma jammer. So, is it worth just going ahead and getting one bitcoin? No, not everybody can afford a whole bitcoin, which is why you yes, can buy can. less than a bitcoin. You can buy less than a bitcoin, 40 bucks worth, but then you can sort of put money in as time goes by, as time goes and, by get, sure. and get a bitcoin. I'm not saying that you have yeah. to get it all in one whop. Right. I think some people don't understand and that. And I want to they... apologize to all the uh, uh, Italian Americans that have just heard that. Um, anyway, the uh, there's a common misunderstanding, though. When you start talking to people about bitcoins and you tell them the price, there's a big gasp usually because they don't think they could afford that. They don't realize that Bitcoin is divisible down to eight decimal points. Right. Um, so you kind of one give Bitcoin them that information. Could, could, could conceivably service the whole planet as far as money goes. If it were divided down enough, sure. So no, no. If there was one Bitcoin, yes. If it, yeah. eight, eight. Go to expresscoin.com and you can go and get as much or as little Bitcoin as you would like. And don't forget to use code FTL if you order less than forty bucks to get it for free at expresscoin.com. You can now do so from Canada as well. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, uh, we've been talking about the police. That's kind of what started out the show with our first caller. And, Mark, you've got a, a cop-related story. This one's a mom who calls the police on her son for pornography. We'll get into that here in a moment. Plus, we'll find out about Officer Peach. Who is it? And why is he in the news? Liberty Phoenix, or maybe it's a she. I don't know. But Liberty Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, I've been having a lot of issues with preaching the good word, if you will, to my friends and family. Um, apparently, the I come good off word as, about freedom, you mean? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Um, apparently, I come off as condescending, or at least <laughs> this is what I've been told, um, and that like it sounds that I put myself on a pedestal, and and they interpret me as being uh, as thinking that I'm better than them. And I was wondering if you guys have any tactics that you can use to avoid transmitting this, this, the message that way. Because yeah, who I've are had, you getting this feedback from? Um, my friends and family and coworkers. Hmm. Okay, so um, what's probably happening here? Oh, first off, um, I, I've, I've got to say that in your defense, people that say that you sound condescending generally don't have anything to say about the argument that you've just put forward, right? Like they're bad at this debate thing. They have nothing to say. So what they've got to say is you've said what you've said wrong, right? Like, so that I, I, I but what you need, need to consider is, is that you're trying to change hearts and minds. You're not trying to be right. So that's, it's important uh, to, to consider that. I, I also, I will defend people, however, when it comes to this condescending thing, because I think it's, it's a poor uh, rebuttal. And it could also be a thing of, they could be asking you the questions in a way that sort of invokes a condescending style answer. Such as, well, that's well issue, what do you I mean, mean? They don't ask about it. What do you I'm... mean roads could be built without government? Huh? Well, it sounds to me like, um, I mean, are you saying that we need the government to put concrete on the ground? I mean, that sounds condescending, doesn't it? Yes. Because we don't need the government to put concrete on the ground. I mean, you know, like, you've asked me a dumb question. I have pointed out that it was a dumb question. And then we go, you know, we, we move further. So, yeah, I mean... So that's my defense, and it was certainly we've been called on condescending a, a million times here on Free Talk Live. Or, um, is that just something something that you know naturally comes with being aware that you own yourself and that all these other people are acquiescing to the state? I mean, is that just something that's naturally going to occur? The, the condescension? Um, I don't think the condescension has to, and I'm going to give you some techniques. So first off, ask more questions, give fewer statements. If you ask questions, yes, you will often get people riled up. There's no doubt about it. But you can't really be considered condescending if you're asking questions, um, especially if you can keep your tone light. You know, instead of, really? 
Do you think that it's impossible for the government to, or for you know some other organization besides the government to put concrete on the ground? Yeah, you know, like that's a condescending tone. I, you know, I used to think that too. But then I thought about it, and it's not like the government's the only agency in the world that could possibly put concrete on the ground. And in most cases, they're not the ones putting the concrete on the ground. Right. They're hiring the contractors with your money. Right. So there's actually people who aren't the government, and there might even be some evidence that the government is bad at putting concrete on the ground, uh, and that we don't really need them to do that. Now, what you might... You know, and then you go a little bit deeper, because usually if people are talking about roads, what they're actually talking about is eminent domain. They don't think that only the government can handle roads. They think that only that you need the government to steal land from people in order to make straight roads. And that, you know, that this would be this goes into auction theory. Right. So if you look into the ways that it's possible to make roads, look, because all you need is two paths from point A to point B, and then you put those people against each other in a bidding situation, and one of you know one of those people in that path is going to say yes, and the other ones are going to say you know and, and underbid the others. And what one of the things that I find interesting is if you go back and look at the railroad systems from the mid to late 1800s. The railroads, or you know, the train tracks that were built by private companies on private land, were actually straighter than the train tracks that were built by governments. Because the governments wanted to give their friends and cronies payoffs. Yes. Yes. Oh, you're going to buy our, we'll buy your land, and we'll pay a little too much for it. We'll drive, just take the train way over here and do that. I think that the uh, I think we've gone off in a away from the original question, which was about condescension, uh, into a discussion about roads and trains. Mm. But uh, Ian's going to talk about condescension. Yeah, <laughs> did I you hear my tone? That, um, <laughs> anyway, this is a common accusation. I've been accused of this as well, and I think that one of the reasons why people uh, people in the liberty movement are accused of this is because it can be difficult to communicate to someone else these ideas. And not come from this perspective of, oh, I'm so enlightened, you know, that you've you've discovered this thing that other people haven't discovered, though they normally live their lives by it, uh, but they don't realize it. I'd like to come back uh, with more. If you don't mind, Phoenix, uh, you can hang Absolutely. on. Uh, we'll come back. 855 450 free, free talk live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My Magic Mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, walk I'm with comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. 
Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bother to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now. Effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Have you been accused of being condescending as a a liberty-minded person trying to talk to people that you care about, about ideas that you care about? Uh, That's what we're discussing with Liberty Phoenix right now, and you can, of course, join the conversation, add in your thoughts, or bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. You know, if you value your online privacy, you really need ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data, meaning that when you're surfing, your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing. They won't know what website you're going to, what search terms you're entering. Right now, they're probably logging all that information, keeping those logs in some cases for as long as five years. So if you want to protect your privacy, you can start right now at proxpn.com slash FTL. Download their free software. Get it installed for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux, you can use ProXPN as well. There's just a slightly different set of instructions for you. proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade, you can just go and start for free right now, but their free accounts are uh, limited in bandwidth. When you want unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, the ability to privately torrent, and to get past regionally blocked websites, grab Pro XPN's premium package and do it with our discount code, FTL50. Get you 50% off of the price of the annual account, which brings the price down to about 5 bucks per month. That again, code FTL50, and that's good for the lifetime of the account. Plus, if you want to save even more, pay with Bitcoin, and you'll save 62% off the annual account price with this code. It's FTLBTC, like Bitcoin, FTLBTC. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Remember, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Codes are FTL50 for those of you who do not pay with Bitcoin, and then FTL BTC if you are paying with Bitcoin. Great discounts on great privacy that matters. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Let's go back to Liberty Phoenix. He's been accused of being condescending by friends, family, and co-workers and it's certainly possible that uh they're some probably of the things... right you know no that's not <laughs> what i'm saying uh i think that it's possible that you know perhaps people are interpreting the things you're saying as condescending even though you don't necessarily intend to sound that way i know that when i've been accused of being condescending 
I've never thought of myself as above anyone else. And, you know, that's the definition of condescending. You're descending from your level to talk to the little people or whatever. I, on the other hand, am certain that I'm above everyone else. Well, I'm not like you, um, but I, 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 agree. I do believe that I'm on the same level as everybody else. And when I'm communicating, I just want to communicate ideas. But I can understand why somebody would say, oh, well, you're, you're just being condescending because there's it's hard to express. And, Mark, you did this earlier. You used the salesman pitch of I f- feel felt found, I think. Or wait, is that what it is? Feel felt found? No, I f- it's just like salesman thing where you say, once upon a time, I felt like you did. You know, I felt like this. And then, I, then found I found that. And now I feel that. Found, fe- found felt, feel. Found feel. Yeah, that's it. Now I feel that this. So you kind of explain your process. And the idea in sales is that that's supposed to. Felt found some, method. Felt found method. That or that's, felt f- found technique. I always heard it feel felt found, but either way, um, that's actually it's a feel felt found is the uh, strategy. Yeah. So is that the technique that I should use? No, well, I don't know. Course? I think you can. I think you have to be cautious with it because while on one hand you're saying it to try to uh, identify with the person, oh yeah, I used to feel that way, and then I found this information, and so now I feel this, you know, I've, or I found this. And the, the idea is you're supposed to connect with somebody with that, but I don't think it comes off as uh, in that way all the time, especially with these ideas, because it can sound like, oh, well, you used to be at my level and now you're all the way up there. And that wasn't I think the intention. Tone. tone is very important here, but oftentimes you're dealing with people who haven't spent that much time thinking about these things. I mean, so you're – I mean – condescension is a it's going to be it's sort of a natural thing like you've spent some time thinking about this you have come to a conclusion that is higher and better than the conclusion you had before which is of course the conclusion that they share so yeah i mean you know to some extent you are better than they are in the sense that you have found more so that's only from your perspective they may feel that you're not not better than they are and they may you know while you may disagree with them then they they should be able to come up with really great arguments right well let let me ask this question liberty phoenix the people that say that you are condescending when you are discussing the ideas of liberty are these people that you often butt heads with when you're having other conversations uh, well, I don't really have other conversations. So <laughs> that's pretty much all I talk to these people about. If I'm not talking to them about liberty or about something that's happened um, because of police brutality or something like that, I really don't talk to anyone anymore. They don't have anything to contribute. Everything seems like a waste of time. They're probably tired of hearing me. about it, honestly. I mean, th- some people just aren't good prospects. Right, and, and the, the reason that I asked the question is when you first called, I was thinking it could just be as simple as – like personality clashes or people that you don't really get along with anyway that they really don't want to be talking to you about anything so they'll just find an excuse to not listen. Well, I like what Mark has to say is that they don't have anything they can say, right? Because your ideas are very good and they're threatening to a lot of people's sort of status quo of right. where they're at. And so rather than really address the ideas or try to come up with some sort of rebuttal or admit that they're wrong or that, you know, oh, well, you might be onto something there, Liberty Phoenix, it's, oh, well, you're just condescending. And so it's a way to brush off the whole conversation and make you look like the bad guy. So tone, ask questions as opposed to giving statements. I like that. Asking um, questions. Yeah. Do the feel uh, felt found method. That's I think it's I think it's good. And I think generally it's good, but you have to be car- careful with it. And and here's one thing that I think th- that really worked for me with my wife. Okay, because I I had this going Before on. Before you get into that, with the feel felt found, it's one thing when you use feel felt found and you're trying to sell a product because buying a bar of soap isn't going. Nobody's going to see that as like you've had some sort of uh, mental epiphany. Epiphany, right? So that's I not felt the same dirty. Thing. I found right. soap. Now, <laughs> now I feel I'm clean. Irish Spring you clean. You should buy soap too. Yeah. So that's not the same. And I think that when you come at it from this discussion, it can be tricky. But go ahead with the Laura example. Um. So yeah. So I had this problem with my wife um, early on. You know. I mean, people don't. I didn't. I didn't date her because she was a libertarian. I uh, started dating her because you know we really clicked and. So one thing that I was – obviously at the time I was doing a radio program and I needed to come up with uh, solutions based on a, a free market principle to different problems. But consider that everybody listening to me can uh, claim to be starting a blog or 
you know, thinking about doing a podcast or whatever. And so therefore they um, are trying to figure out, you know, things from a liberty uh, angle on a particular issue. And then you could ask the person themselves to solve the problem. You know, I, one thing that I've been having some trouble with is trying to imagine how, uh, you know, security or policing might go on in a free market. And specifically things like uh, burglaries or murder or rape or whatever the, the, the terminology is you use. And some of these are some of the, the tough points I've had in it. Can you think of any ways that I might explain this, like the, what, what, what the world might be like in the absence of a monopolistic state, but instead sort of a free market thing, and then have them solve the problem? Because if they can come to the conclusion on their own, that's obviously the ideal, and that's what you were talking about earlier right. with asking questions. Well, that, that's but this one really does set them right in the center of it because at this point, they don't either. You know whether or not they want to have a conversation with you at the end of this. It's like, I hate talking to you about this stuff, and now you've put me in the middle of this. Like then you're going to get a very bad reaction. It's going to be like, I don't want to think about this. I don't care about your blog. What's important to you doesn't matter to me. Well, yeah, that's kind of like the point of the crux of it all. I mean, how do you present these ideas to people where you will spark that interest of wanting to finally be free? Because the people that I'm around, they don't care. Not they well, are <laughs> complacent. And not complicit everyone's a with good them. prospect. I mean, yeah. this is a sales game. Why and... do you think we moved to New Hampshire, right. uh, Liberty Phoenix? Uh, it's because, <laughs> it's because uh, I mean, you know, this is what everybody deals with in, the, in their lives. And uh, some people aren't really going to notice the, you know, encroaching big government until, until big government them. smacks them in a face with a two by four. Yeah. I mean, at some point you just got to put somebody down as a bad prospect and, or they're not ready for it now. You know, and six months later, they may have had that smacking sure. of the two by four and then they'll come to you and they'll say something like, you know what? Such and such happened. And I thought started thinking about it and you were right. More coming up. This is free talk live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike <laughs> try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 that's 800-952-5760 Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. Jesus Christ visited every tribe okay. in America. In, uh, America. in America. She's a, in she's America, one. absolutely. There's a book that Man, came he out. he around, didn't he? He was in India. He How did he China. get from, from wow. point A to he, point B? He had quite a life. In a boat. So and they took a boat from the Middle East all the way over to North America? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> 
archaeologists went and visited different tribes oh, and, really? and followed their myths and stuff. And uh-huh. None of them used the name Jesus, but they all described him as a white man with long brown hair and, and, well, and a beard. Well, now, why is it that Jesus yeah. is white? That, that's how what did I want to understand. How did a white guy get born to a bunch of Sephardic Jews is what I want to know. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, God's white, so I mean, that's how. Of course he, he is. Was the Immaculate Conception. He could make that baby whatever color he wanted well, to. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site totally free. And you get to actually control the content. Submit stuff to the front page. It will be voted up if people like it and voted down if not. So go and try it for yourself at freetalklive.com. You can vote on things there as well. And if you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, check out Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students are using Modafinil, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen are also talking about Modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Over at modup.net, they make it affordable for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of Modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It is, therefore, your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You order with Bitcoin, you get a 33% discount. And to make the deal better, use code FTL and you get 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget code FTL at modup.net for world-class service at a great price on Modafinil. That's modup.net. Dot net code FTL. So a little bit more, I think, on the idea of uh, condescension and talking with people about the ideas of freedom. I mean, you've got a situation where Liberty Phoenix, he's in Illinois, probably one of the least freedom oriented places in the United States. He's surrounded by people who don't you sound condescending. That's just an assessment uh, based on the amount of government they have there. I don't care about your facts. It sounds condescending. Okay. Well, I can't help it how people interpret the things that I say. If I, I don't know. intend, it's really the tough to, thing it, is when you use facts to talk to people, and then they yeah. say you sound condescending. What are you dealing with there? Somebody that doesn't want to listen to you at all, so will come up with an excuse to try to discount everything you said. I'm not going to propose to know what it is that they want. However, if you're claiming that somebody sounds condescending, you should consider that you're just don't have anything to say in rebuttal to what they, what it is that they've said. Right. It's also possible that someone could be condescending. Yeah, right? like yeah. They could be saying, well, I'm better than you because I've discovered the ideas of freedom, I'm an enlightened person, and you are just a, you know, you're just below me. I mean, there certainly could be people who really do come from that perspective. 
I don't uh, believe in that sort of thing. But it, but I can understand why people feel threatened by these ideas and why they would lash out like this. It's somebody that they purportedly care about. He did say it was family. Of course, family members and are going to be coworkers. some of the more difficult people to convince of anything because they right. know you and they know how wrong you've been in the past. They, you know, your family members know how fallible they you saw are. you fall off the bike, right? All that stuff. Um, and so they're going to be more difficult. Uh, friends, uh, you know, you can get into heated conversations with friends a little bit easier and you know, still be friends afterwards. But eventually, if you've continued having these conversations about freedom and you're not getting anywhere, there's no headway being made. And that's, as Liberty Phoenix said, all he ever talks to anybody about anymore. That could also be grinding on people. Like, yes. You know, they're. I, I understand, like, for instance, Cody O'Connor uh, recently on Off the Air Live, his show has been saying that... Uh, you know, he's frustrated by the fact, the, the claim that, oh, well, you can't talk about politics and religion at the dinner table. And those are the two most important things to talk about. And I agree with that. I think that you shouldn't feel as though something's off limits. You shouldn't feel as though you can't talk about these things. But it could really burn on somebody after a while. If that's all you talk yeah. about, you shouldn't be surprised if they don't want to hang out with you anymore. Uh, but again, the best way to solve that problem is to actually find liberty minded people that you can you can connect with. And, uh, you know, have relationships with. So not everyone in your life is seems at, le- at least that way it wouldn't feel like everyone in your life is against you all the time. Right. I could see that it could be pretty overwhelming to, to have to deal with. And, you know, maybe try to find some common ground of, you know, hey, talk about something that they enjoy talking about. Well, sure. If they're your friend and uh, and that's something you want to spend time on. I mean, obviously, you only have so much time. Right. And if if the coworkers want to talk about the football team and you don't care, then don't pretend like you do. Right. So toll free numbers, 855-450-FREE. Of course, the Free State Project, I don't think we actually mentioned it explicitly. This is a good idea for those of you who love freedom. Uh, the Free State Project is not a cult. It is not the idea of leaving your family and you know completely shutting them off. Uh, but in some cases, some people have had to physically leave the area in which their family lives to move to New Hampshire. But the idea of the Free State Project is to get liberty-minded people together all in the same geographic area so we can actually have an effect and have more freedom in our lifetime. And the fact is that when you have enough people together in one area who have similar ideas, it can be easier to influence other people. So I'll give you an example real quick. When I've done booths, outreach booths at like county fairs, there are times when it's busier and times when it's not so busy. And usually it gets busier when it's somewhat busy. So when there's somebody standing at the table doing whatever it is I'm doing, you know, whatever outreach thing, uh, they're there, they're talking to me then that's more likely to attract another person over to talk to me. If, Daryl, you're working with me and we're both working the table together and you've got somebody talking to you and I've got somebody talking to me, again, the more people at the table, the more likely it's going to bring other people over. So the fact is, as we make these ideas more popular, then they'll be more likely that people are interested in them. Yes. They'll, They'll seem less crazy. If you're the only person, think about it this way, if you're the only person in Illinois, in these people's lives, or wherever you happen to be, dear listener, if you're the only person talking about the ideas of freedom to your friends and family, then yeah, you're going to look like a nutter. You're going to look like some crazy loon on the soapbox on the, the side of the street because you're the only person they've ever heard this from. You're the first libertarian they've probably ever met. And you may not be the, you know, you may not have been the best communicator of these ideas the first few times you talk to them. And we're all constantly improving. People want, so. um, most people don't want to sit around and solve the world's problems. What you often they their find, own problems. Yeah, what you often find with uh, liberty sorts are people that, they're problem solvers. You know, their mind has gotten to work, began, you know, chewing away at this idea of how could humans get along better? How can we solve these problems, these conflicts that are constantly going on over and over again? And many people don't want, it's not in their personality type, it's not in their nature mm-hmm. to sort of solve that problem. And so, you know, they're not going to be as committed to it. Many people, you know, they were raised in a, an environment where it's, you know, get yours and forget about the rest of them. And that we have a system that works very well for people for who are people. like that. So you can share your thoughts, your techniques, please. I mean, by, certainly, even though we're on the, the, the radio here, that doesn't mean that doesn't we're the best. Doesn't give us a monopoly commu- on anything. Right. It doesn't mean we're the best communicators. In fact, I highly recommend the advocates for self-government in this area. Uh, there are always things that everyone can do to improve their communication techniques, and there's some great tools they have at the Advocates for Self-Government. Their website is theadvocates.org. 
Uh, for instance, The Secrets of Libertarian Persuasion is an mm-hmm. excellent book by Michael Cloud where he goes through a number of very specific techniques for uh, persuading people. I would say that the short answers to tough questions by, by Mary, Mary, Ru- oh, Mary Ruart, Mary Ruart right. is a very good book. Yeah, that's another good one. Let's go to Steve, and I believe they, sh- they sell that at the Advocates for yes. Self-Government. Uh, go to Steve in St. Louis. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? Hey guys, how's it going? Good, Steve. Go ahead, um, sir. So yeah, yeah, good, good conversation tonight. Um, what I wanted to bring up is a little bit of a like tech issue or technical technology issue. Sure. Um, I work in the car business, and I know that you know self-driving cars, like it's our the technology is already there for it. Yep. They just haven't really gone into production yet. Mm-hmm. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You know? Okay. And yeah. And the thing is, is I'm wondering, it, it does bring up a lot of questions. Like, you know, if you, if you're driving a self driving car, you're sitting in the passenger seat, you have a pilot seat, whatever. It's driving itself. You get pulled over. Who's responsible? It's an excellent question. Is, is, is Google responsible or are you somehow responsible for the programming or for a programming error or something like that that might happen? Wasn't there a story recently yeah. that the Google, Google car hit a dog or something like that? The only incident from what I've read, and this was maybe a month ago, so if something's happened in the last month, then you know my information is going to be incorrect. But as of a month ago, the only incident in which the Google self-driving car had any kind of you know infraction was when the person in the driver's seat had overridden the computer and was manually driving the vehicle. I thought there was something that happened. Finally, something happened. And, you know, so there's going to be mistakes made, and you have to have mistakes in order to, uh, you know, to, to make things better. Steve, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. looks like the story about the dog is not a confirmed story. It says a Google car may have run over a dog because they saw it on Street View. Not the same as the self-driving car. Uh, there's more coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com you got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, September 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.45 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $481. Antiwar.com reports, Al-Qaeda's Jabhat al-Nusra has finally issued demands related to the 44 Fijian UN troops they captured late last week in the Syrian Golan Heights, saying they're willing to free them in return for humanitarian aid to be delivered to one of their remaining territorial possessions, a suburb of Damascus called Ruta. The Syrian military has mostly expelled Nusra and other rebels from the areas around Damascus and has conducted protracted sieges on the remaining suburbs to try to force the rebels out of the area surrounding the capital city. Nusra captured the Fijian troops on Friday following their seizing of the Golan crossing between Israel and Syria. The UN has troops in the region to observe a ceasefire that's been in place since 1974. In addition to the Fiji troops, Nusra attacked Filipino troops yesterday, though they managed to escape into Israel without being captured. The UN says they remain unsure of the location or the fate of the Fijian troops. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The AP reports, the owner of Bikini Coffee Stands in Washington State allegedly banked more than $2 million in the last three years because her baristas were also selling sex acts, according to local prosecutors. Prosecutors charged Carmela Panico with promoting prostitution and money laundering, alleging that she operated drive through brothels throughout the county north of Seattle. Authorities said her baristas made money mostly on tips, saying they could earn hundreds of thousands of dollars. The women said they could charge up to $14 for showing their breasts or genitals, and according to charging documents, charged more for sex acts. The prosecutor said Panico's businesses were driven by prostitution and lewd behavior. Authorities alleged that she did not report her full earnings to the IRS by dealing in large amounts of cash. A search of her home last year resulted in the seizure of nearly $250,000. The investigation has also led to the prosecution of a veteran sheriff sergeant, Daryl O'Neill, who is accused of tipping off Panico and her workers to police scrutiny in return for sexual favors. O'Neill resigned after his arrest last year and has pled not guilty. His trial is scheduled for November. Authorities allege that the baristas had a certain dollar amount they were supposed to pay Panico, and they were allowed to keep the rest. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports. Macau, the world's largest gambling hub, re-elected its chief executive and sole candidate, Fernando Chui, on Sunday, a widely expected result after the pro-China government stifled an unofficial referendum on democracy. Chui was returned to office by a select panel of 400 largely pro-China loyalists in the tiny but wealthy former Portuguese colony. Macau's leaders have taken a much harder line than in neighboring Hong Kong, where pro-democracy activists have been struggling for universal suffrage. The The election in Macau coincides with a meeting of China's parliament that is expected to limit 2017 elections for Hong Kong's leaders to a handful of candidates, a move likely to escalate plans by pro-democracy activists to blockade the city's central business district. Activists in Macau have still made unprecedented moves to have their voices heard, trying to follow in the footsteps of its fellow administrative region, Hong Kong, by launching an unofficial democracy poll to coincide with Chewy's re-election. However, authorities moved quickly to quell the informal survey that asked whether residents have confidence in Chewy and whether they support universal suffrage. Police arrested five people for allegedly breaching privacy laws, charged one of the leaders with aggravated disobedience, and shut down some of the polls. Despite these moves, close to 9,000 people had voted in the unofficial referendum by midday on Sunday. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
For over eight years, Gary Lightman has been the chief executive officer and guiding force behind tech company Media Merge Incorporated. Lightman spoke to reporters this week about working his way up from his humble beginnings as a son of the previous CEO. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I would someday be the CEO of my dad's company, I would have said, absolutely not. I mean, it feels like just yesterday that I started off as a senior executive at this company and now, I'm in charge of the place. Lightman told reporters that he credits his continued success in business to a number of crucial moments in his career, including getting hired by his father, his father's retirement, and a few lucky breaks in between. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a lot of work. I was here for nearly eight hours every day. Someone clearly saw my efforts and took notice. You know, a lot of young people ask for my advice, and I always say the same thing. Work hard, and it will lead to bigger and better things. That's what I tell my kids. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us on freetalklive.com. You can actually create the content right there on the front page of the website. Just submit whatever you want. It's Reddit-based, so if you've got a Reddit account already, you're one step of the way there. Uh, you get a Free Talk Live account. That's also free. You link the two accounts together, and it's that simple. You just post whatever you know, news article, blog post, YouTube video, anything you find online that you think will appreciate or our other listeners will appreciate, and it might just end up on the air. Now, of course, the best way to get on the air here on Free Talk Live is to call in. The toll-free number is 855-450. Free. Mark will be telling us about a mom who called the cops on her teenage son over something that almost every teenage son is guilty of. Pornography. We'll get uh, into that here in a moment. We've got Daniel in California. Daniel, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Daniel. What's on your mind tonight? All right. So um, I grew up in the Bay Area in Northern California, and I'm a more or less lifelong libertarian, so I've been banging my head against this wall for a long time because most people around here are pretty liberal-minded. Yeah, the, the wall hasn't and, softened and, where you are. No, no, not at all, yeah. And especially the, the demographic that I was in. I was an upper-middle-class white guy in Sonoma County, which is pretty hippy-dippy. Went to hippie private schools with, like, kids whose dads were in the Grateful Dead and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've, uh, I've seen a lot of the, the, the patterns that libertarians get into when they try to communicate their ideas and the problems that they keep keep running into and the landmines they keep stepping on. And uh, so I thought I wanted to share a couple of those ideas. Please. I, I think the biggest problem we have is we come out swinging. We are so eager to point out to everyone where they're wrong, their misconceptions, the things they're oblivious to, the things they care about that they shouldn't care about the things that they ought to care about, that they don't care about, everywhere they're wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, you're better and off pointing out when they're off. right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You've got to start where people are and then bring them to where you are. You can't just stand there pointing at where you are and be like, don't you see, don't you see? It, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. get you anywhere. And I think the biggest problem we have is that because politics are so sort of bifurcated, you know, the whole left-right thing and you versus me sort of thing, that everyone you talk to is always looking for an excuse to dismiss you yes. as an enemy or someone who's a corporate hack or whatever, you know? So if you're, if you're talking to a hippie, you got to convince them that you don't just hate poor people or whatever. And if you're talking yep. to a mar Marine, you got to convince them that you don't just hate America. And I think uh, libertarians would really benefit if they would spend a – more time at the beginning of the conversations establishing that, like, we are not your enemy. We are not these cartoon characters in your mind of bad people doing bad things, which is how many liberals and conservatives see the, the other side. Right. They've, uh, you know, the, the one thing that has been very effective on the, the right and left new cable news channels is to paint the this cartoon character to create this cartoon character of the person with whom we disagree. And the, I don't know that there's anybody out there that hates America, right? Like 
you know, libertarians are probably the ones that get thrown in this category the most, but you'd you'd think that there were these leftists out there that just hate America. I haven't met these people yeah. yet. Pinko commies. I, I, you know, may, maybe, but I think that some people may think, you know what, maybe national boundaries are a concept that would be best left in the 19th century. You know, maybe we can move beyond these things. But, you know, each person has their different ideas to how these things could go away and, and that kind of thing. But the whole, I just hate America, no. You know, I try to look at every issue from both sides. And when you're talking about international issues, usually there's one side and the other side's America. Like, really? That's yeah. almost <laughs> always what it comes down to with national issues. You know, there's the other side and then there's America. Why? Because America's inserted itself in every single international incident. So I'm still not entirely positive, and I hear the term a lot, but I'm not really positive what the phrase, you hate America, actually means. Well, it doesn't mean anything coherent. It isn't deep. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, uh, um, it's a superstitious spell. I mean, it's like saying, God bless you after a sneeze. They, they hear a, a certain phrase and they say, you hate America. And it's as automatic and reflexive as someone sneezed, so I said, God bless you. You don't, you don't think about mm. it. It's something coherent. Right, it's but, just noises yeah. coming out of their mouth to express an emotion. Well, where I'm coming from, though, is if by you hate America, you mean that I want the federal government to dissolve itself, then yes, I'm guilty. Right on, if you yeah. mean that I don't like the Grand Canyon and the Rocky Mountains and oceans and Sea World, then no, I'm not guilty of hating America because I like those things. Well, I think you're trying to, to elevate the phrase to a, uh, a level of precision that it's not meant to have. I mean, right. it's... it's uh, I'm trying it's to be concept. reasonable it's, and it's logical. Joe right. Go Joe. You're not being condescending, which is what's needed in this circumstance. You know, I'm sorry, but the person that's whipping out, you hate America, isn't thinking about this, isn't, isn't spending any time thinking about this. Yeah, you're Cobra Commander in his mind. It's not real. It's, it's childish. Which one was Thank Cobra you. Commander He's the again? one who talked like this! That's a terrible impression. Yeah, Cobra I, well, I, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Leave it yeah. to the professionals, Mark. Sorry. In fact, I miss Co Cobra <laughs> yeah. Commander. He used to call this show, actually, and, and maybe he'll be gearing up his campaign <laughs> again uh, for 2016 because he was running for uh, for election back in 2012 and was updating us on his campaign. Good call tonight, Daniel. Any other tips you want to share? No, that's it. Take it easy. Thanks for the call. I appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Pete. He's in California as well. Hey, Pete, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, yeah, so I was kind of wondering um, when when are people uh, when are people going to violently revolt and walk it alone? Because you know what, I agree with the libertarian thing, you know, but I don't agree with the because somebody else isn't bothering me necessarily that that makes their behavior moral or ethical or okay. Like for example, I, I do. Me being a conservative Tea Party, uh, actually the cadre of the Tea Party out here for the greater area, I I don't like the the propensity to accept things that are immoral, like pornography or being a faggot or doing narcotics or, or abortion or as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else, I don't do that, you know. And maybe that's because of my you know biblical background and I'm stuff. I'm confused. But Okay, first, you've brought up several different things here. You've brought up uh, shooting, which, of course, we've had a conversation about that before, Pete. Uh, on this show, uh, we, do not, we do not support, at least the three of us in the studio tonight, do not support the idea of shooting to solve problems, uh, that that's somehow going well, that, to fix the bad government. Did, well, and nor I do I think that people who are watching pornography should be shot. Were you, were you suggesting that pornography, uh, something should happen to people watching porn, or are you saying you want to leave them alone? I was saying I agree with you libertarians in most things, you know, okay. being a conservative and stuff and thinking minimal government. But I, I believe that what is it going to take to protect those God-given rights? Because the tyrants, the federal government isn't going to dissolve by itself. 
what's gonna what is it gonna take for them to just leave us alone and not have to be forced to do that? I mean, good question. Is it too late for our civil liberties, or is it? Is it no, it's never is too it late. It's, from being violent because, no, it's never at, too late. Okay, so you you've asked a lot of questions. Let's many, let's start having a conversation where we can answer some of them. Okay, Pete. So it's never too late uh, right. to assert your rights. Although it can get more difficult the longer people wait in order to do that. Yeah, there's probably some well, Jews that's uh, you know that that uh, tried to to assert their rights there at the end. Yeah, and it didn't uh, go well. Sooner rather than later would be good, and that's one of the reasons why liberty-minded people who love freedom are moving to New Hampshire to you know join with the Free State Project and to get active so we can stand together and assert our rights. Because if you stand alone and assert your rights, you'll just have your head cut off uh, by the people calling themselves the state. And if you are standing together, then you'll have strength in numbers. You'll be more powerful without ever having to lift a finger to commit any violence. Thanks for the call, Pete. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Either way, whether we're talking about violence or uh, peaceful solutions, you still need people on your side. Whatever you do alone, you might as well just forget about it. More on the way here, 855-450-FREE. If you want to check out the Free State Project, you can go to freestateproject.org. And by the way, I did find the story about the Google car. It did apparently go the wrong way down a one-way street and ultimately crashed. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us, and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves. I forgot to mention, uh, we're live. It's Labor Day here in the Free Talk Live studios in Keene, New Hampshire, as Mark, you and I are celebrating eight full years in New Hampshire yeah, yeah. Uh, on this here weekend. Uh, it was Labor Day weekend 2006 when we made the move as early movers as part of the Free State Project, and I have just had such a blast. It's been so great being here as part of the Free State Project. Of course, the idea of bringing freedom-loving people all together to the same geographic area. It's not just Keene, New Hampshire. That's just one of many possible destinations. Lots of people moving to Manchester, Concord, the Seacoast, Nashua, and small towns all across New Hampshire. Over 1,600 people are here now as part of the Free State Project, and many more are pledged to come. Over... 15,000 was darn close to 16,000 the last time I looked. I don't know if they have quite crossed that line. I imagine I would have heard something about it had they crossed 16. We want to reach 20,000. Uh, in fact, they are, let's see, 15,979 participants wow. right now. So they're about 21 signers away from hitting 16,000. Let's just go ahead and get that done tonight. That'd if you've been great. thinking about the Free State Project, if you... If right now that's your intention to move, then you are qualified for the statement of intent. Look, I understand that there may be a lot of things for you to overcome in the next five years or whatever to, to move. That's not what the statement of intent is about. The statement of intent means you intend to move. So if it is your intention today to move, you should go to freestateproject.org and Get sign up. up. Yeah, absolutely. And now some people really have to go through a lot before they can make it to New Hampshire. And Andrew Jones is one of those people. He is already a Free State Project participant. And he um, unfortunately is not going to be able to come here anytime soon because right now he's on house arrest awaiting trial by the federal government for being one of the administrators, allegedly, of the Silk Road underground drug marketplace. You can go to DrewsDefense.org. You can help contribute money to his defense, uh, his legal defense. His parents are not wealthy. He is uh, not wealthy. And they, his parents had to actually mortgage their house. They had to put up their retirement incomes, post those things as collateral, essentially, to get a bond posted for their son, a million-dollar bond. So he's currently out on bond, but still needs help. Uh, go to DrewsDefense.org. Andrew Jones, he's a Free State Project participant, and I hope we can get him up here one of these days, but right now he cannot leave his parents' house. He is there 24-7 awaiting the trial. Now, Rob, uh, now of course, Andrew hasn't been getting all the press coverage. In fact, he's barely gotten any whatsoever. Ross Ulbricht has been getting a fair amount of press. We've talked about Ross. We've had his mother on the show. I support Ross's efforts as well at FreeRoss.org. Uh, but Andrew needs probably even more help. DrewsDefense.org is his website. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, that is the Pro XPN toll-free line. So let's get into the story about the mom calling the police. Mark, you've got this. Yeah, this one's out of the, off the HuffingtonPost.com. A mother in South Carolina called sheriff's deputies on her son this week after finding porn playing on her living room TV. Hmm. According to the Oops. Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office, deputies were dispatched to a residence Tuesday afternoon after a distraught mom called 911. She stated that uh, when <laughs> 911. Yeah, oh yeah, this is an emergency. She stated uh, when she wow. entered, entered her residence, her 15-year-old son was in his bedroom. Reads the uh, police report. Mm. Her daughter turned on the TV and porn was on. According to the report, the 40-year-old mom immediately turned off the TV, <laughs> ushered her two-year-old daughter out of the room before calling mm. the police on her son. When a sheriff's deputy arrived, the mother, whom Huff, Huff Poe has not identified to protect the teen's uh, privacy, said that she had several problems with her son's behavior recently. 
the, the mother. <laughs> He's, I just don't understand it. The, the mom requested that a report be done to document her son's behavior and due to her daughter's being exposed to porn. This will go on your permanent record. Of course, and it and it did. Listen, <laughs> we caught Johnny with one DVD of barely legal number seven. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. <laughs> According to Lieutenant Kevin Bobo, the sheriff's office did not take and make an arrest or issue a citation. I don't know of any South Carolina law that was broken, Bobo told mm. the HuffPo on uh, <laughs> uh, Thursday. I think I can, I can think of one actually. This woman called nine one one. If you're calling 911 to report a non-emergency, isn't that isn't that illegal? I don't think that no, I don't. I I think that police need to use discretion, yeah. right? And in dealing with a distraught mother who clearly has her priorities mixed up as yeah. far as uh, <laughs> you know, things go that that the best thing to do is to say, "Ma'am, I'm sorry, but this really is not that uncommon." And I'm sorry <laughs> that you were exposed to this and I understand you're from a My different heavens. age. Yes, I've got the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it the Vespers? Or no, it is those, the vapors, those are little it? motorbikes. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, no, those are Vespas. However, the teen's mother did complete a voluntary statement detailing the mm. incident, according to the police On report. Record. The mother, who was identified as a local real estate agent by the smoking gun, did not respond to HuffPo's request for comment <laughs> Thursday. Bobo said the 911 call was the first of its kind to his department. That's too bad. I would have loved to have heard her response. I would have loved to have had some quotes for her from her about this. She should have called 311, which in South Carolina is for non-emergency police and other county or city services. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody knows these the other ones. You know, well, like, I'm on the South Carolina website right now for E11. This was an emergency to this woman. Her daughter just saw some pornography. And wasn't her daughter two or something like she that? She had a 15-year-old and a two-year-old daughter. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, the 15-year-old was the son that was in the bedroom. I don't believe that's entirely I the case. The that's what it two. said. It said the, Give yeah. me just one the second son here. was in the bedroom. All right. Her 15-year-old son. No, wh- Hold on just a second. According to the Spartanburg uh, dispatched, she's, uh, her mother... I'm sorry, her son... Um, yeah, you better be sorry. I've read the story. I'm pretty sure it's 15 is the son Her and daughter two. turned on the TV. So you're telling me a two-year-old turned on the TV? Yeah, why not? Uh, two-year-olds know how to work remote control. Heck, two-year-olds know how to work iPhones now. All right. Come on. Could your son have turned on a TV at age two? I don't know. We keep the clicker up too high. We don't want him <laughs> to just be able to walk into the house turning on a TV. I think He cri- might find porn. The crime here is is that you let your two-year-old walk straight in the house and turn the TV on. Well, what I want to know is, why was the son watching the porn on the main TV set in the house? More he clarity. might not have a television in his bedroom. Maybe. Maybe mom should just get him his own computer so get he a can sit in his room, <laughs> lock the door, um, maybe it was one of those things where he was like watching the porn on the family TV. Mom came home, so he and turned he it turned off it off quick. real quick. That's the TV all he could do. Could do. Right. Ran in, zipped his pants up, or runs did whatever into his he could. bedroom, yeah. but he didn't have enough time to hit stop or turn the computer right. off or something like that or change the channel. Maybe he just figured that it was. He doesn't you know, have that muscle memory to know like all the things well, you have to do to sort of un. Well, when uh, mom uh, shows disarm up, disarm the porn on. bomb he, before. <laughs> here's the question: Was it one of those? You know, like the scrambled porn channel. Come on, where is that thing exist? These days, I, Jeez, that's have the you thing. dated yourself? That's, You're not 43. But that's the weird thing about the story is that you have to put it in perspective of this is 2014. It's not the same as when we were kids. Right. Where I know exactly what you're talking about, Daryl. You would uh, back in the kids back in the day, television used to be analog signal, <laughs> and uh, they had to scramble the signal in order to make it so certain pay per views were. Let, let me get in this last line from Bobo here. <laughs> is it unusual for a mama to call police on a teenager looking at porn? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that's the cop. <laughs> that's the police officer in that case, Officer Bobo. 855 453. We'll come back with more here in moments, and you can share your close calls. Or did you get caught? Free talk live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and 
installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1 855 905 My TV. 1 855 905 My TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, I had a question online earlier today and about my magic mud, which is something we've been talking about here on Free Talk Live. Lots and lots of our listeners have gotten this, because I'm getting all kinds of comments and questions, too. Yeah, and they've said really nice things about it, like, this stuff actually works, like you guys say it does. Uh, because our listeners don't believe us when we say something works. I, mean, I don't understand it. It's not like we, you know, it's like we're coming out and endorsing products we don't believe in. Yeah. I, I mean, you'd think that the way we act on the air, we're, we're as uh, as truthful as we honestly can be about everything. They're that they just go for it. I don't blame them. They're they're skeptics. They you should know. be skeptical, but. They gotta know for sure, and they've been trying it, and uh, and I've seen the posts on our amplifier yep. forum where people are raving about it. But one of the questions I got was, does this only work on recent stains, or does it work on you know stains on your teeth that have been there for a long time? I don't know. 
I couldn't say. I believe that it does. Um, my girlfriend has had some res- some pretty significant results and uh, from using my magic mud, I think. I mean, well, yeah. I, I and, think your teeth have gotten whiter, too. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure those stains have been there for a long time. So that's well, my that's my observation. Define a long time, like a month, a year. Years. I mean, she's been five a cigarette years. smoker for years. I think it's worth a, sh- a shot. Why not? Yeah. Go yeah. to MyMagicMud.com and get a canister. It's 150 applications. In four applications, my teeth were as white as they can be sort of naturally. Hmm. And uh, that that's what I, re- what I want. I don't want chemically whitened teeth, but right. I would like my teeth to be as white as they can be. And My Magic Mud can do that. It's natural. It's tooth powder. It is. And it also polishes your teeth and, you know, really gets the – the because, I mean, we know ba- bacteria causes cavities, right? And what it's got in it is char- charcoal, like a charcoal filter and uh, bentonite clay. And what these things do when they come in contact with the water, they become activated, and then they bond to things. So the charcoal, instead of bonding to the stuff in water when it's uh, filtering it, bonds to the bacteria in your mouth. Grabs it and pulls it out of there. My mouth is much cleaner than it was using just regular toothpaste. Here's a comment uh, posted two days ago by Luke, one of our listeners. He says, not sure if anyone else has given an endorsement here or not, but my supply of My Magic Mud arrived last night, and the results I'm seeing this morning are consistent with what Mark has reported. Yep. No early morning film on my teeth and no booty stank upon waking. <laughs> I'll report back after I have a few more uses under my belt, but I'm already noticing a reduction in stains. I, too, am a big BuzzBox coffee drinker and quit a 10-year-long smoking habit last year. There you go. So the ringing are long, endorsement. Yeah, those are those are old uh, stains, too. Where do you go to get one of these things? MyMagicMud.com. It is totally worth it. I will use this stuff for the rest of my life. I don't care when they stop. If all our listeners get it and they stop advertising at some point, fine by me. I'm going to continue to using it. MyMagicMud.com. All right. So uh, let's continue here. We were discussing a pretty ridiculous story out of South Carolina that unfortunately doesn't seem uncommon these days, or at least it seems to be becoming more... more uh, common where parents will call the police because they're frustrated with their kids because yes. their children have done something that is against the rules of the household but not necessarily against the law uh so perfect example is the story mark that uh, you've been sharing here about this 15 year old uh, teenage boy who was caught allegedly with pornography now, it could have been the husband i mean i don't know if she's a single mom or not but it could have been a hu- the husband that was watching the porn and now this you know the son's getting the blame for it but either way she called the police on him over this and there's been other situations where parents have gotten into arguments with their kids and they've called the police or whatever they've they've just been maybe just so frustrated with their children they've called the police but that seems like it almost seems like an admission that you're you're a bad parent right like you can't even handle disciplining your children or well, you can't not handle to, to them i mean to them this is beyond the pale i've told my son about pornography and now he's just gonna have to face the consequences mm. i'm calling the sheriff and lieutenant bobo says ha, 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 lady come <laughs> on illegal. stop wasting our time see maybe maybe she's one of these people that thinks that people watching porn need to be shot and she's read articles about people that call the cops because their kid did something cop shows up shoots the dog shoots the kid well th- this is one of the problems with doing what this woman has done is is that there's it's not uncommon for parents to call the police on their children and their kids to end up dead mm. Like there's been an instance uh, where a car was stolen, the kid got shot and killed because he tried to get away from the cops and the cops said, he came at me with a truck Mm. and bam, the kid's dead. And, you know, of course, suicidal kids, kids are upset, have a knife in their hand, things like this. Dead kids. So it's a good thing this uh, young man wasn't looking at pictures of teenagers uh, his age because then he might have been charged with child pornography uh, as a young Uh, A young female was after her parents called the cops on her. This is a similar story from the Huffington Post from about a few days ago. A Virginia couple has turned their teenage daughter into local police after they discovered she was exchanging racy images on her electronic devices. The girl, who is 13, had been using her phone to send nude photos of herself to boys, said the parents. Uh, The mother of the girl told WTVR, quote, looking through her phone and the tablet, we did find sexual pictures and conversations that were very inappropriate for her age. Everybody wanted to be her friend because according to these people, (laughs) I'm sure they did. She was cool now. 
unquote. The mom said the girl received messages from at least one boy who appeared to be in his late teens asking if she wanted to have sex. That led them to contact the Dinwiddie County Sheriff's Office. They took her daughter to the station and turned her over for questioning. Police say they're investigating the case. The boy who sent the messages is believed to be a senior at an area high school, and depending on his age, that could mean felony charges. But now how could he get a felony just for inquiring about sex? Lewd and lascivious, I suppose? That's not a felony, is it? Well, it depends on what you've done lewd and lasciviously. I so I don't know. I don't know the answer. The prosecutor said there are other options available, and the girl may also face charges. In fact, I'm surprised they haven't charged her yet when we've seen multiple stories of teenagers, both male and female, being charged with manufacturing child pornography for taking pictures of themselves and then sharing them with their friends. Now, in a lot of cases, the they will intervene on some of these charges and they will make a deal with the kids where, okay, son, you have to go to a, a, a porn class or something like that, some sort of anti-sexting course. I actually remember I looked up one of these courses after I learned they exist, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I looked it up to see what it, this was like, and you know, it's one of those mandatory four-hour government classes mm-hmm. where they tell you about how bad it is, kids. You shouldn't be taking pictures of yourself because it can ruin your life, and then they give you a you know, 10-question quiz at the end, and you've done your, your requirement right. at that point. So a lot of times they will ask the the young person to plead to a a lesser charge and require them to go to a sexting class. So in some cases, doing the sexting doesn't result in a lifetime of a sex offender registry, but in others, it certainly could. Uh, Disturbing story, nonetheless, yet another pair of parents using the police to solve a problem. Now, it's certainly arguable that it could be a bad idea for your teenage daughter to be putting pictures of herself naked online, but you're only going to make it worse by bringing the police into the situation. Yeah, I mean, the most qualified person to deal with the situation is you. Um, I mean, I I don't know what else to say. You're just the most qualified person to deal with the situation. Share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Oh, so I asked for stories. Uh, Maybe, you know, you almost got caught or you did get caught with uh, pornography when you were a teenager uh, would love to hear if you have one. I've got one. So I had. Do they have? Ma- is there magazines in the story? No. Uh, this was from the 1990s, and so let's see. I think I was in high school at the time. This was back when you could call BBS systems. This was before, not really before the internet, but sort of in the transition period where the internet existed, and so did BBSs as well. Okay. Uh, so BBSs, for those of you who are younger and have not heard of this, uh, BBSs were sort of the precursor to the internet. You could call someone else's computer, usually in your local area, because you wouldn't want to call long distance and be billed by the minute right. uh, to call one of these services. But you could do that if you wanted to pay the money for it. You'd call someone else's computer, and they'd have this software set up where you could connect and then share files and transfer messages and play games with other people. And on some BBSs, they had porn areas. So I had downloaded some of uh, some of the porn. Back from when those, you downloaded porn, yeah. Yeah, from those BBSs. Well, don't you still download porn today? Some people do. Technically, if you're streaming it, then it's downloading. Yeah, it's just downloading. not being saved. Not saving it. More coming up here in moments. Uh, and I got busted with some of those pictures. I'll explain how in moments. You can tell your story as well. Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. 
General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever is on your mind. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Hey, if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then please become a Free Talk Live amplifier. You can amp over at amp.freetalklive.com. And we haven't mentioned this in a while, but the platinum amp pins are still available. We have some very special and very limited edition platinum pins that uh, have basically the Free Talk Live logo with a fist and the phone and breaking the chains. Uh, You can get that. On a fancy shiny badge from Shiny Badges uh, and shinybadges.com. Of course, you can go there and get all kinds of cool stuff. But uh, you can get one of those by becoming a Free Talk Live Platinum Amplifier. Now, you don't have to do that. The regular level for amping is 5 bucks a month. Platinums are 25 bucks a month. But whatever it is you feel is appropriate, please, if you send it along to us, we'll put it to good use. We'll get Free Talk Live on more radio stations around the country. Uh, that's what Daryl and I do uh, during the daytime, although today was a day off due to Labor Day. Normally, we call radio stations and pitch the show to them. And also, some of the AMP money goes to buy online advertising to bring new internet listeners on board as well. So you're making a big difference for us when you AMP the show. Please go to amp.freetalklive.com to get started there. Use any major credit card through PayPal or use Visa or MasterCard right there on our website. And again, that's amp.freetalklive.com. So it was in the 1990s. I had downloaded some porn from, uh, I think it was a BBS or two. And so I have my my porn collection, and for whatever reason, is this reason, video or just pictures? Pictures, okay. just pictures. Um, at, at some point, I put the background of Windows to a, a picture of a topless woman, 
and I left it that way on accident. I went away from the computer for a little while, and this is a remarkably bad idea. Yeah, one this of my was yeah. not your computer, right? Well, no, it was the the family computer. This is the family computer. Yeah, and, and you so, have a younger sister. Is that correct? She's four years younger than me. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that went well. So but I'm sure back at this time it. there was probably only a family computer. There wasn't. That's right. Ian's computer, no. the sister's computer. I didn't have my own computer until I left the house. Speaking as the parent in the room, I'd like to say that was your parents' first and main concern. What was? Was the, the younger child in the house. They didn't say anything like that to me. Fine. Well, it doesn't matter. That's what their concern is. Well, if that was their concern, they should have said that. Um, so anyway, they caught me, and they got, my mom gave me a stern talking to about how porn is bad or something. I honestly don't even remember what the uh, the points of her conversation with me were, because all I was thinking about was how I would hide, you know, cover my tracks the next time. <laughs> well, I can't get caught doing this again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I suspect that was kind of similar to what was going on with the 15-year-old in the earlier story where he got caught watching porn on the TV set, although he wasn't caught in the act of watching it. He was in his room when mom came home, and then the two-year-old daughter turned on the TV set and there was porn there. So the presumption being that maybe he you know, saw his mom come home and just real quick turned the TV off. and Maybe he heard the away. car pull in the driveway. Right, right. So I found two things on the story out of Virginia. Found two things. That Which the, one is in Virginia? That's the teenage girl? Yeah, where okay. the 18-year-old asked, you know, would you like to have sex? Right. I found two felonies. Potentially 18. The high school senior. Right. High school senior, potentially 18. If he is 18... There are two felonies that he could possibly be charged with. Hmm. One is titled Taking Indecent Liberties with Children, and it is a Class 5 felony to propose to have sexual intercourse with anyone under the age of 15. Hmm. The other that sounds is like the one. Yeah. Conspiracy to Commit a Felony. Interesting. Which is also a felony. But that's a four, not five. Right. So, so one's a class it's a worse five. Crime one's if a, she says yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> one's a class four. One's a class five. Both are bad. Okay. Yeah. Now, would they bring her up on a conspiracy charge as well? No. Uh, in that case? No, because you have to be over the age of right, eighteen. Right. Because she'd be the victim. They're just going to punish success. She'd be the victim there. So uh, yeah, would love to hear from you if you've got any stories of being caught. Do you guys ever get caught? With porn. Were, with porn. My stash of, of porn magazines was thrown away more than one time. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, what was your mom digging through your closet and your drawers? How'd she catch you? For with the- whatever reason, she happened to be in my closet. I don't I, I don't think that I really felt like I had uh, privacy in my room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had hiding spaces and, and that sort of thing. And I, But but you don't want to hide it too well because you need to have res- relatively easy access to this <laughs> stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. What are you going to do? I never got caught. I almost got caught a oh, couple really? of times with a couple of my dad's uh, VHS tapes. Mm. Like, I found my dad's stash. Right. (laughs) And, you know, because we only had one VCR, and it was in the living room. I think I drove before I got to see porn that moved. I mean, really, I don't... (laughs) And we... Do you remember the VCRs where it would have the little counter with, you know, like zero, zero, zeros? The physical counter on the VCR? Yes. So... I would always make sure that I rewound it back to the spot so that he would never (laughs) suspect anything. And there was one time that uh, I was watching something and I hear him pull up into the driveway and just like, you know, shut that off real quick and threw some shorts on. So you left the video in the the VHS unit? Yes, until he went back Right. So the risk that could have been the very same risk, sort of that now was now taken in 2014 by this teenager. Although, yes. you know, it, it, back in the day, it would have been a pain to wait for the VHS tape to and yeah. then come out. Right? You'd, you'd be sweating, waiting for that thing to come out. Mom's coming up the the walk. Right? Uh, that that was one of the times when I just like popped it out as soon yeah. as I had the chance and like ran and threw it in his closet. But what I'm thinking was what happened with the the 15 year old is he was in the midst of watching it and then he just didn't have enough time to shut it down like you. You, know, you left it in the yeah. VHS deck. So if dad had come home and decided he was going to play the movie that he thought he left in there last night, turns on the TV, right. you would have been busted. This is the thing that I really sort of I, I get uh, high and mighty about within this story is this woman walks in. OK, so, you know, kid probably throws on whatever clothing he has, runs yeah. into his room, turns off the TV. Right. She comes in. That two year old walks to the TV 
turns it on before this young man can get into better clothing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, get in some a lesser state of excitement, come back out, um, get the porn out of off of the TV that is just off at this point yeah. and playing, right? To somehow disarm the the uh, the porn bomb on the TV. Wait till mom goes in the other room or something like this that. This two year old yeah. has already turned on the TV before yeah, this bad. has happened, and I've got to say, your family's addicted to TV, mm -hmm. lady. Your thoughts are welcome. Share your story. 855-450 free. We go to the phones here. Actually, go to Skype where Freedom is on the line in, or excuse me, Dave rather from Las Vegas. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, what's on your mind? Um, I probably lost count of the amount of times that my father had called the police on me when I was oh, younger. No. Um, Not for none porn. of them had anything to do with porn, though. Oh, okay. That wouldn't be an issue in my house, I don't think. But um, <laughs> two of them that uh, I remember clearly, one was actually he had hit me <laughs> when I was 12, like in the head, too. He like actually punched me. And um, mm. he called the police out of frustration. So he called the police on himself? Strange. No, well, he called them on me, but it just didn't make any sense. It was my son assaulted my fist with his head. Right. <laughs> so that was strange. Um, nothing happened. I don't know, though, you know, this was years ago. What would happen now if uh, the same thing had happened? Well, but... let me ask you this, Dave. What do you what do you think the best solution would have been in this circumstance? Do you think your dad getting an arrest or whatever for punching you in the head would have been beneficial to your life? No, I yeah. mean that would just cause more problems. I don't. Yeah, think I, I don't know. Anything. I mean, really, that's the only thing a police officer can do in that circumstance. Right. But I would say it's completely unacceptable to punch a twelve-year-old son in the head. I can understand. Believe me, having a six-year-old son, I get it. But um, it, you know, it's 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 not a good solution. <laughs> well, calling the police was just ridiculous. But I guess it was out of frustration. But there was another time I remember when I was fourteen and I had had a knife. This was in Massachusetts, so pretty much everything was illegal. But it was actually a knife that had, it was like knuckles and had a knife that hung out the side. Okay. And it had fallen out of my pocket uh, and I didn't realize it. And then he saw it on the couch, so he had picked it up. And uh, for some reason he gave it back to me, but then said he wanted it. And it was a friend of mine, so I said no, and I left. And he had called the police when I came back. I had given it to uh, another friend, so I didn't have it on me. But Son, I that's pretty back. cool. I want it. Right. Give it over. Yeah. So what he's, well, <laughs> at this point, what he's trained you to do is to deal with police. I don't know what he's talking about. I think that he's had too much to drink. <laughs> you know, like you, you said, you, at some point or another, you get good at dealing with the police, and your dad's basically taught you how to be, how to be that. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, unfortunately, I've had other incidences with police as well. But he would call them just— you know, there was nothing really illegal about it. I guess in that circumstance, that that knife was illegal. So if they would have caught me with that, they could have charged me with uh, possession of a dangerous weapon or something. But the majority of the time, it was just, you know, he just arguments or something where he got frustrated. I don't know if he called the police because he was scared of what he was going to do because he was so frustrated or what. Uh, Man, if you're frustrated, take a moment, take a chill pill, count to ten. There's there's ways to deal. Uh, with frustration, picking up the phone and dialing 911 is a terrible, terrible method. Terrible method of parenting. Thanks for your call, Dave. Toll free number tonight for you to bring up anything. Tell your story about your parents calling the cops on you or getting caught with pornography. We can also talk about all kinds of other things. Coming up here in hour number three next on Free Talk Live. At the Home Depot, buy one or more pallets of GAF Royal Sovereign three tab shingles and save up to 20%. Let's raise the roof, but lower the cost with bulk pricing on GAF, America's number one shingle, featuring advanced protection technology. This is worth shouting from the rooftops. Let's do this. Up to 20% off one or more pallets of select GAF shingles. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Valid through September 17th, U.S. only. See store for details. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or... Cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, Labor Day, September 1st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,287, silver opened at $19.44, and Bitcoin is trading around $480.27. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, Saturday marked three weeks since the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown at the hands of Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. Hundreds of protesters marched in the streets of Ferguson, Missouri and Washington, D.C. to call for charges against Officer Wilson. The Ferguson Police Department announced they would be fitting their officers for body cameras. Liberty Beat reporter Derek Bros went to Ferguson to investigate the situation. Bro spoke with retired Philadelphia Police Captain Ray Lewis regarding why more police officers do not stand against police violence. The reason is that officer is putting his welfare and perhaps his life in jeopardy. The, the bottom line is this officer realized there's no, I'm not, there's no reason I should report this guy because nothing is going to happen. I'm going to get fired. I may get uh, really brutalized by my own officers, threatened. As protests continue, the community in Ferguson hopes their efforts will one day be able to pierce the thin blue line. A Maryland Court of Appeals ruling on a rape case that deals with DNA collection may have big implications for privacy protection. Glenn Joseph Rayner was convicted of rape based on DNA collected from a chair he sat in. Rayner had previously refused to consent to giving a DNA sample to police. Four of the judges ruled the police did not act illegally, stating that law enforcement can collect DNA wherever they can access it. U.S. District Judge Lee Yeagle has ruled that a law requiring abortion clinics to be held to hospital operating standards is unconstitutional. Judge Eagle's decision was a victory for the clinics that sued after Texas Governor Rick Perry signed the bill in 2013. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all-natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reason books free by calling 800 800- 686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, Labor Day, September 1st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com the Liberty Beat. Bitcoin entrepreneur and advocate Charlie Shrem will plead guilty Thursday to federal money laundering charges. Shrem is accused of helping users of the online marketplace Silk Road to buy drugs with Bitcoin. He was arrested in January of this year and has since been on house arrest at his parents' home in New York City. While his plea deal may still include jail time, Shrim is optimistic he will not be put in a cage. He plans to ask the Bitcoin community to write letters of support to the judge who will oversee his sentencing. The Liberty Beat will keep you up to date as his story unfolds. The Washington Post reports that anti-government protesters stormed Pakistan's state television building Monday forcing the channel briefly off the air as they clash with police and push closer to the prime minister's residence. 
Over the weekend, clashes between protesters and security forces killed three people and wounded hundreds in running street battles in Pakistan's capital, Islamabad. Well, this Friday, September 5th, is Jury Rights Day. Activists across the country will be educating the public about a juror's right to nullify laws they find unjust or immoral. The Fully Informed Jury Association has sent out packets of literature to FIJA activists nationwide. You can learn more about jury nullification and print your own materials by visiting FIJA.org. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. And support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMooreShow.com and LRN.fm. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, Labor Day, September 1st of 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Well, it's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. Today, Pennington's black part of town moved across the river to North Pennington. The Thompson family sold their home on the east side and moved to the old Kirkland Place at 17 Mansfield Place, establishing the all-new black neighborhood. North side residents are looking forward to the infusion of fun and funk that the new black part of town is sure to bring to their area. Mayor Mitzi Kranowitz presided over the dedication of the new black neighborhood, unveiling a sign designating it a land Mark District. It's lovely, everyone. Pennington's diversity is its strength, whether it's Little Harlem or the so-called neighborhood where Paul and his partner Bryant have that cottage. Sheriff Stevens today announced that the heavy round-the-clock patrols that helped make the old Thompson house one of the safest neighborhoods in town will move with them. This has nothing to do with the black part of town moving here. We just want to make sure that everyone here has a comfortable place to live. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring out any or bring up anything here on Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and that's brought to you by ProXPN. We've got Skype as well. You may Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We were talking uh, in the last hour about a mom who called the police on her teenage son. He's 15. He got caught, allegedly, with pornography on the family television set. And that also led into a story about a 13-year-old girl whose parents called the police on her for taking pictures of herself, and she may now be facing criminal charges uh, as a result of that. Of course, it's not uncommon for young people to be able to easily access pornography today, unlike in the past. It was a little more difficult when we were growing up. Mark, you are about 10 years uh, older than I am. I'm now 34, and you're what, 43? 43, 43, yeah. 43. Daryl, you're 35? 36. 36. So, you know, we all kind of grew up in the same 20-year window of time. Uh, when, when I was growing up, I remember on the school bus sliding a Playboy magazine back and forth under, you know, like under the seats, sliding it around so everybody could see it. Um, and then, of course, later on in, in the 1990s, uh, there were computers and were able to download uh, be- the beginnings of downloadable porn. But we're talking about, you know, 256 color GIF graphics compared to what we have today, where there's no limit to the amount of colors and things like that. I, I love the onion uh, parody about the guy that's reminiscing about the about the old porn, old porn, just waiting on it to where depixelate. You, right where you had to wait for the lines to draw down the st- <laughs> the screen as it was downloading it. Yeah, so I mean, I go I go back that far, and uh, so it's not like we had to deal with uh, reel to reel kind of porn or putting it on you know movie projectors and things like that from back in the 60s or 50s Uh, but you know things have gotten easier i mean there's no doubt these days uh the the amount of porn that's available to young people is limitless i mean it's just a a google search away and some parents are concerned about this obviously they're calling the police and it seems kind of pointless it seems really pointless to do any level of uh bringing the police into this, but let alone for parents to really be concerned about it. I mean, are you really going to be able to stop your kids from looking at porn? It seems pretty unlikely, especially considering everywhere they go probably has an internet connection. And so therefore, even if you manage to crack down inside your home, 
it's just a matter of when they leave your home to go to someone else's house to you know spend the night at a friend's house or something like that when if most of the time when I saw porn it was at my friend's house <laughs> that much is true uh, my, my I had one of those situations where friends of mine had found their parents they knew where their parents stash of porn was yeah. and so they would raid that uh, when their parents weren't home. So it just seems like a futile thing to do, but some parents seem to be obsessed with controlling the content that their kids encounter. Well, okay, so as a parent, I can kind of understand, right? Like my mom was going through my closet at one point or another to do some level of cleaning or looking for something Mm -hmm. or something like that. She runs across some Playboys and or penthouses or whatever what I had at the time. She was snooping on you. I mean, you don't, I, I don't really believe that. Why would mom go and clean I, your closet as for I recall you? the first circumstance? I don't believe the snooping was involved. However, I think it happened like three times and I suspect she was looking the next two mm-hmm. times. Right. So I don't think the first time that she just some stumbled. I think she the first time she just stumbled across it. Yeah. My question to you is, what is she supposed to do as a put parent, it down? Walk away. As a parent, you know, what, I mean, you know. It's, it's none of her business. 1987 or How whatever it is. How old were you? Uh, you know, six, 15, 16, something like that. Uh, 14, 15. I don't know. Maybe have one of those talks of, hey, I really don't want you looking at this. It's going to, you know, mess up your <laughs> view of how you see women, blah, blah, Naked? blah, blah, blah. This is the funny thing is, is just you're, talking, you're talking about Playboy and Penthouse. Not penetration, right? There's nothing go. I mean, you can't. In Penthouse, there was penthouse penetration. Penthouse, there is. This was 1985. Oh, wasn't that uh, explicit back then? It didn't then? even have that. Hmm, okay. So what were you saying there, Mark? You think that she uh, should have said something to you? I don't know what she would have said. I don't. I frankly don't know. Did she say something to you? She didn't. She just threw it away. She just grabbed it, so you went back to look for it, and it was it's gone. Like, gone. Oh, well, I know what happened here. <laughs> and this is one of those things. If you're not going to go say... Hey mom, uh, did you throw no. out my porno magazine? It's done. It's like rob- it's like robbing a drug dealer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, um, I just feel like, look, I mean, it's really none of your business. This is obviously a private thing for your uh, for your son or daughter, and so just just leave it alone. It's not hurting anybody. I guess there's something to be said for a conversation about pornography and how it's not realistic in a lot of ways, that it's just mostly men's fantasy and that real sex isn't like what you see in pornography in a, in a lot of ways. So maybe there'd be some level of a conversation that could be had about it. But if you're not, if you're in a relationship with parents that can have that conversation, then that makes sense. But there but are in- very few parents that have the kind of relationship with their kids to where they can have that conversation. No, I'm right. And that's why I'm saying in most cases just leave it alone. If you're what? not if you don't want to have a conversation that's mature rather than just telling your kids don't do this. It's bad. Blah. Then but, uh, just leave it alone. And some parents are probably scared to have a conversation about uh, pornography because you're sort of contributing to the delinquency. You know what I mean? Mm, like consider no. People have been arrested for showing pornography to kids. Hmm. So if you're like, okay, yeah. you want to have a, t- a conversation about sex? No problem. Let's put this on and I'll show you some stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Like this is like may very well be considered a crime where you well, are. See, from what I've noticed of, you know, sex ed videos and porn, the only real difference is during a sex ed video, there's a narrator telling you what's happening. And in you porn, saw completely different yeah, sex background ed background music. They didn't show me that in You school. saw completely different sex ed videos than what we saw. I, I walked away from the sex ed videos that they had at Braden and Christian School in 1983. Oh, two or whatever, women. without knowing what sex yeah. was. <laughs> Not understanding the orifice involved in uh, for, for, for fe- female reproductivity. I would love to like, see some Christian school sex education videos. That's how I think confused I was. I went to a public school and we never had sex ed. Really? Yes. Wow. All right. Let's go to the phones here. We've got uh, Chernobyl on the line in I don't know where. You're on Free Talk Live. Minsk. Hey. Hi, I'm in uh, Minsk. Exactly. Minsk. Uh, all right. I I've been following the news. There was uh, basically that iCloud hack, uh, and then somebody started putting all these leaked celebrity nudes on 4chan. And there's you know rumored to be many more to come. The guy's holding out for Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin yeah. is it's really great, right? Uh, anyway, one of the rumored things is Maisie Williams, who plays uh, one of the Stark girls Aria on Game Stark. of Thrones. Yeah. Supposedly, there's some of her out there, and she's not even 18 yet. So, you know, like hypothetically, what if you found out your kid wasn't just looking at 
it goes to the psychology of it. Like if kids look mm. at it, like, hey, I know my kid's not gay anymore. And he's looking at cute girls on the internet. But if your kid's into some weird, like there's lots of creepy rape porn, there's foot fetish stuff, uh, you know, there's upskirts. scat porn. Hold yeah, on, all that stuff like that weird. Now we know uh, what Errol's uh, into. Yeah, Daryl, okay, check. But, but I've that. sucked a toe before. <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> oh, God. Was it, it clean or be, dirty? Yes, I don't want to clean. talk about this anymore. <laughs> Hello? Okay, you're right here. <laughs> Mark, Mark okay, cannot but, hang up on you. <laughs> I'm like, hang up on Daryl. Here's the thing. Like, if, if you're into, you know, like, naked girls, cute girls, that's all great stuff. But if you're into something, like, dark and, like, it's like, why is my 12-year-old son wanting to watch Bukaki? What is he learning about women? Mm. Why is my daughter looking into something, like, do you want to be in that situation? Is it, like... The internet has got a lot of unintended side effects, and one of them is like maybe exposing people to some very obscure stuff that has gone mainstream in a way that itself will breed unintended consequences. You know, that's it's it's. I have no answer. I've stumbled across some porn that has freaked me out. Oh yeah, the so yeah, you know, like full yeah. of this stumbling stuff. across something. Lemon party. Oh no, the, yeah, don't go into uh, that. No, but you know, Google stumbling it. stumbling across something once and you know, only watching that are two different things. So, you know, like if you go on your kid's laptop and you'd see, you know, like one hit for Bukaki, that's not as bad as, you know, like a hundred hits for it. A hundred hits is Bukaki. Haven't you seen Thanks it? Thanks for the call, Chernobyl. Appreciate <laughs> He's hearing from you. On the line. <laughs> See, this is why I didn't have, want to have this conversation on the air. <laughs> Clever guys like uh, Chernobyl Minsk. That was fine. There's He's, nothing. He was on the line. He didn't yes. cross any lines yes. there. <laughs> if you don't know what Bukaki is, then that line was meaningless. Yes. The toll and free if you number, do, you're a perv. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. I posit that you can't be on the internet for more than five years without finding out what Bukaki is. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Whether you intended to or not. More on the way here uh, in moments, and you can take control of the airwaves. Tell your story if you've got one of uh, getting caught. It's Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877 882 That's 877 882 Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. 
Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenevention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenevention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenevention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Talking about uh, teenagers finding porn, or not finding it, but uh, watching porn and the parents finding the porn. Uh, That was the story last hour. And I think it raises a larger question of nosy parents. Uh, Mark, you were saying that your mom had uh, been known to go through your closet a time or two. We'll continue the discussion here because over at Free Range Kids, one lady has written an article saying she doesn't watch what her kids do online. Oh, well, um, I, I don't know what to say about it. But I do tell do that I'm going to the first annual marijuana investment conference in Houston on September the 8th. I'm not sure what my mom thinks about that, but I did tell her about it last night mm-hmm. uh, on the way home from work. And you can go there with me. Go to marijuanainvestmentconferences.com to get more information. It's the Weston Houston Memorial City on September the 8th. But leave the bong at home. I mean, this is a business conference. This is investors, VCs, business There won't even be any marijuana on site. This is, it'd be illegal in Texas. Yeah, really illegal. Yeah, this is, this is just for investment purposes, people who want to find, get involved in the, in the nascent and burgeoning marijuana industry. And I think a lot of people are going to make a lot of money in this. So if you are interested in finding out more, go to marijuanainvestmentconferences.com. Use coupon code FTL to register. If I get 10 people to register, it pays for my trip, and I would really appreciate that. And let me know that you've registered, too. There was a little bit of uh, an issue as far as uh, you know counting them. So it's marijuanainvestmentconferences.com. It's September the 8th in Houston. Use coupon code FTL. Uh, the story here from freerangekids.com. Now, this is actually uh, written by Jody Allard. Free Range Kids is a site created by Lenore Skenazzi, who is known as being the world's worst mother because she allowed her 10-year-old son, I believe at the time, to ride on a train. I thought he was 11, but okay. Uh, I think he was 10, but either way, um, you know, he was allowed to ride on a train to go home from school in New York City. And there were a lot of moms and dads who thought that was terrible. And that well, she didn't putting... want to, she didn't want him to. She wanted it, it upset her, but she thought the best thing to do was to put on her big girl pants and let him do it. How right. else would he have gotten home? She'd she go would picked him. him up. Okay, well, or that's not always practical, you know, because people don't get off work at three o'clock when school lets out. Well, well it's not an it. issue of practicality. Um, it, you know, children are impractical generally. The issue is is whether or not he is able to do it, and the you know some eleven year olds probably could handle it. Some eleven year olds can't. Uh, frankly, some twenty one year olds probably can't. Right. I, I didn't know if you know there was a school bus that was an alternative, and he there decided. I don't want the school bus. I want to ride the train. I don't know if there was a school bus or not. It was New York City. I don't know how often they have buses there. But in this case, um, that's what other people would have wanted. They would have wanted him to be on the school bus or they would have wanted him to be with mother, would have wanted him to be with some sort of guardian, right? Someone who's responsible for him. And she got a lot of heat 
and it was called the mom's worst, uh, the world's worst mom, as a result, or the, the worst mom of the year. Maybe it was worst mom of the lifetime. I don't know. It was really bad. And she's she's got some really great perspectives over at Free Range Kids. How to raise sel- uh, safe, self reliant children without going nuts with worry. That's the header on the website. Earlier tonight, and the, this is uh, this article is entitled "Why Stalking Your Kids Isn't Okay" by Jody Allard. Earlier tonight, one of my teenage sons came home from his first date. He plopped down on the couch, kicked off his shoes, and told me pretty much everything. Not in graphic detail, thank God, but enough to know that he'd had his first kiss. As we talked, we briefly discussed consent, in this case, his, condoms, and his very firm belief that he isn't ready to have sex yet. After I shared a few condom tips I swear no one ever tells you until it's too late, he wandered off in search of food. Later, my teenage daughter came in to tell me that her childhood best friend forever has started hanging out with kids who smoke pot. The girl's recent birthday party was a beach bonfire, complete with weed. Even while proclaiming how stupid drugs are and how sad it is her friends from middle school are doing drugs at age 14, my daughter paused to wonder why her best friend forever hadn't invited her. Exclusion hurts. Later still, all three of my teens came together to discuss a mutual friend's living situation. They were concerned it might be unsafe. After I finally managed to get everyone out of my bedroom, I replayed all of the evening's events. Sex, drugs, interpersonal relationships, but I don't think I've ever been as proud of my kids as I was tonight. I'm no expert at this parenting thing. I originally followed my own mother's approach simply because it was familiar and I assumed correct. But as my kids grew older and I grew up, the approach evolved. Originally, I had many rules, rewards, sticker charts, and punishments. My kids behaved pretty well, and I thought I was an awesome parent. Then they hit their preteen years and started telling me all of the crazy things they had been doing while I thought they were following the rules. Climbing out of windows. And- the kid was nine years old, by the way, on the train ride, the subway ride home. Okay, thank you. Uh, from Lenore Skenazi. Yeah. Uh, climbing out of windows and walking along the roof to get from their room to their sibling's room just to get out of a timeout. Yeah. And this is the thing that'll uh, let you know as a parent is, is like what's most important to me as a parent is hearing the truth because, uh, you know, I, I guess it's it probably has to do with my child, my childhood. If I would have told my father and my mother what happened to me on the night that I the, this, uh, you know, the, the, the murder charge all sort of uh, happened where this where my co-defendant killed somebody, if I would have told them the truth. I would have never gone to prison. Hmm. And I got away with a lot of things. Up to that point, I had every reason to expect that I could lie my way out of that situation like I had lied my way out of every other situation. If my parents, you know, and how would they know, right? Like, this is the way you raise kids. You raise them to tell you lies. You know, no, you can't tell me that information. We've had people call in and essentially say that in my day, we would never tell our parents these things. Well, you know, I want my kid to tell me these things. Whatever they are, the worst case scenario to me is these telling me a lie mm. and I can't solve the problem. Because he doesn't trust you to handle him maturely, for instance. Sure. Back to the story here. She says, that was what really blew my mind, that, you know, her kids were doing these crazy things just to get out of time out. Going across the roof, that's probably pretty dangerous. Not good. Uh, If my kids could swing that without me or my hypervigilant ex-husband noticing, it became clear the idea of controlling my kids' behavior flat out didn't work. Since I'm not a fan of wasting my time, I tried something new. I ditched all of the rules, other than a few very basic ones that were written out and agreed to during a family meeting. I lifted all limits on screens. I got them smartphones. I made no effort to monitor their online behavior. I removed myself as a person of power and instead tried to create a new role of engaged leadership. I stopped lecturing so much and started listening more. Right. Let's hope that I can create a situation where my son considers me to be a resource. I have gone through everything you're going to go through. Most of it, probably, yeah. Please let me give you advice on how to best do this. I understand you've got to be able to do things and make mistakes, and I understand I get frustrated when you go about doing things differently than I would do them, but please let me be a resource. She says, I uh, started listening more, and I kept talking to them about everything, from something I saw on Twitter to why I was touched by an article in the news. If I was concerned about their behavior, I talked to them about it rather than creating a rule. 
It's been two years now since I dramatically changed my parenting approach. Along the way, I found my own boundaries for what I was willing to accept from my kids. Right, there's, and there are boundaries for me too. There's just things I, I just can't do that. And I began to make that clear. There might not be many rules in our house, but I don't allow myself to be treated poorly either. Thankfully, a sense of humor goes a long way toward easing tensions all around. Recently, I've seen a surge in articles and social media posts about the need to monitor teens' behavior, especially online. And we'll tell you what some of these posts have said. They're pretty outrageous, the level of invasion that parents are doing, some parents are doing on their kids these days online. We'll talk about it coming up on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, I'm Phil Grandy from Phil's Gang. If you've been nervous about investing in the current stock market, then you need to listen up. Phil's Gang is having a free webinar on Saturday, September 13th. That's going to be at noon Eastern Time. You're going to learn how to invest in this type of market, not just the stock market, but you're going to be investing in yourself. Don't miss it. To sign up, go to LearnStocksForFree.com. That's LearnStocksForFree.com or call 877-600-4264. According to a groundbreaking study on anxiety disorders published this week in the New England Journal of Medicine, researchers have discovered that feelings of anxiety can be completely resolved as long as people think about them real hard. After studying subjects with mild to chronic anxiety disorders, we found that the best way to overcome mental stress is to isolate the root of the anxiety, analyze it from every possible angle, and then think about it nonstop until it completely disappears. Researchers worked with numerous subjects in the middle of high stress scenarios and said the key to overcoming anxiety is to start by focusing on a minor problem, list everything that can go wrong in the worst case scenario, and then repeat that list in your head 200 times. After anywhere between three to six hours of perpetually torturing yourself over things outside of your control, all feelings of anxiety will completely disappear and you can finally enjoy the remainder of your day. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is 
Free Talk Live, and we're talking about nosy parents. One lady on freerangekids.com is saying she's leaving her kids alone. She's not monitoring what her kids do online. And a lot of people, a lot of parents would gasp at a statement like that. (gasps) Your kids could be looking at scat porn. Don't you need to know this sort of thing as a parent? Well, apparently some parents are getting pretty invasive uh, with their kids' uh, privacy. And, of course, many parents would argue their kids shouldn't have any privacy. If you'd like to take that side of things, we'd love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, Mark, tell me how to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's that easy. Sign up for the subscription that we have there. Um, You can sign up and cancel that subscription anytime. You'll get a free pound of coffee. You pay the shipping. We'll pay for the pound. It's great coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. You will not taste coffee better than this. It's BuzzBox coffee. The thing that really sets them apart is they give uh, 5% to charity. So in this case, we're able to give uh, microloans. For every 10 people that sign up, it's another microloan that goes to another family to help them get what it is they need to you know, make a better life for themselves. Mm. It's Buzz Box Coffee, coffee.freetalklive.com to get a free pound. So the mom in this article at freerangekids.com, it was posted just a few days ago. I saw it pop up on uh, my, my got a little feed reader thing. And I really like this blog because I think that uh, I, I appreciate the perspective where people look at young, uh, young people, or in some case their children, as... As individuals, as people who are, you know, just young adults or they're developing and uh, they don't need to have their hands held on everything forever. At some point, you got to let go. And, of course, parents are going to disagree on at what point that should be. And that's one of the reasons why Lenore Skenazi was called the world's worst mother, because she let go a lot earlier than a lot of other parents feel comfortable with by letting her nine-year-old son take himself home from school one day. I would point out that I think that uh, it, it differs for different children. I err on the um, on the side of, of liberty, and the reason is is because I figure my son's going to spend more of his time in his life not listening to the things that I say, not not being around me, not living in my house. So I have to prepare him for that life, and it doesn't mean he gets to do whatever he wants by no means. And I think that you sort of have to set a foundation. You have to start very early, but it's a balancing act. I would also point out that. The house belongs to me, mm-hmm. and whatever rules I decide to set up are my rules. You so can set whatever rules, but what this mom's if my saying— rule are, If my rule is, is I can shake down his room every week— uh, You can week have that, yeah, to, just like jail. Yeah, just, just like, like jail, prison. then I think you can do that. Um, however, she's pointing out that having a bunch of rules actually didn't serve her, and that it wasn't making things better. In fact, it was resulting in her kids doing even more dangerous things, like as she pointed out, going on the house's roof— to cross from one side of the uh, the structure to another because they were grounded or they were on timeout and they were supposed to stay in their room. They snuck out their window and walked over to the other kid's room. When I was growing up, there weren't a lot of rules. And my dad actually told me, he was like, if you ever want to smoke pot, bring it here so I know that you'll be somewhere safe right. when you do it. And that sort of discouraged me from wanting to do it. Like, you know, it wasn't as bad. Where's right? the fun there? Yeah, there wasn't the sizzle of doing something that was prohibited. So she says, uh, recently, I've seen a surge in articles and social media posts about the need to monitor teens' behavior, especially online. A friend posted about the topic, and her friend suggested everything from having all of her kids' emails forward to her, uh, forwarded to her to viewing all of their friends' 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 accounts on social media to see what kind of kids her kids uh, are hanging out with. One mom reads her teen's texts every night. Another has software that monitors and tracks all internet usage. When I encounter behavior like that among parents, I wonder why stalking your child is ever considered acceptable behavior. Stalking an adult is a crime. I don't understand why doing the same thing to a child has come to be considered good parenting. She says, I also have to ask myself what the goal is. Is it to protect kids from danger? Is it to make sure they never make a mistake? In any case, it seems designed to build resentment, distrust, and hostility. Yeah. Imagine how you I would, would imagine react. they're probably figuring ways to get around these these things. They're of do- course. Yeah. Look, if sorry, unless you're an IT professional and even then, I would suggest that your kids can probably outsmart you when they, <laughs> when it comes to computers. You know, you the parent, unless you really know your stuff, 
there's probably some way they know about that you don't to hide whatever their tracks are, uh, anonymize their browsing, cover up the tracks, etc. Well, and, and you might recall when we had the conversation several weeks ago about the uh, schools in Hoboken, New Jersey that are getting rid of their federally subsidized laptops, mm -hmm. where the IT guy at the school said, there's no more determined hacker than a 12-year-old with a laptop. Yeah, exactly. So imagine how you'd react if your significant other demanded that you hand over copies of everything you did on your phone every day. Kids have privacy and autonomy, too, and by the time they reach the teen years, it's time for them to start making decisions, stretching those wings, and making mistakes, doing the same stupid stuff teens have been doing for decades, all in the name of being a flawed, imperfect human who learns and grows. My kids have generally been given as much freedom as I felt they could handle. In the past, I erred on the side of caution. Now, I err on the side of trust. Not because I expect them never to mess up, but because I want them to have the freedom to do just that while they are still safely cared for here at home. Sometimes I shake my head at the crazy things my kids do, but being trusted to make their own choices, they've learned to trust themselves and their own judgment. Even at 16, for example, my oldest son doesn't want to learn how to drive. Instead, he takes the bus and has chosen to wait to drive until he feels ready. I know my kids won't always... Yeah, I always... shake my head, too, that one, too. I know my kids won't always be on the right side of every situation like they happen to be tonight. Eventually, they may choose to have sex or try pot. And considering that 99% of the adults that I know have done both, I think they'll be just fine. A few weeks ago, I... They're going to do that. And the question you want to have as a parent is do you want to be a resource in this circumstance or do you not? Because I do. Or do you want to be a resource or an authoritarian figure? I mean, because it, you don't get to choose between the two, right? Right. You really don't. I mean, you don't. There's just none they of that. They either trust you to come to you and bring you their problems or they don't trust you as far as they can throw you. Which one I mean, is, is going through their phone at night and snooping through emails? With their knowledge, is that going to breed any level of trust or appreciation from them whatsoever? You know what I no. want? I want my son to do exactly the things that I imagine are the best things to do. Mm -hmm. However, perfection is not an option. We humans, uh, what, what's the old saying is, is that good judgment comes from uh, mistakes. Mistakes come from bad judgment. So, you know, <laughs> I don't remember how it ex goes exactly, but essentially you've got to make mistakes in order to be good at uh, making, uh, you know, making decisions. So I guess he's going to make mistakes as much as I dislike it. She says, a few weeks ago, I defriended my kids on Facebook. I realized that with my kids as my friends, I just wasn't free to post openly. They were horrified by my decision and gasped almost in unison. But how will we know what's going on in your life? It's simple. I told them you can ask. So I just thought that was a neat story uh, that, again, just sort of flies in the face of the way a lot of parenting is apparently going these days. I'm interested in knowing how widespread this idea of poking through all your kids' emails and grabbing their phones at the end of the day to go through all the text messages. How common is that exactly? I think it's fairly common, and there's a phrase or a term for that kind of parent. It's called a helicopter parent. Well, that's not necessarily a helicopter parent. A helicopter parent was originally uh, come out with, as I recall, with parents who would continue the parenting process of overprotection when their kids were supposed to be, even be gone from the house. I, so I the thought a helicopter parent was a parent that was always on top of their kid. Yeah. That's the, the, the word came about, as I recall, we talked about this a decade ago on Free Talk Live when I, when I first saw the, the terminology. It was in reference to parents that would, for instance, want to come on a job interview with their kid. They would want to uh, come to college. Uh, who does that? They would A helicopter parent. Well, they would no, it's no freaking doubt. The fact is so many laws have been passed that a kid can't get a job. I had a job at 12 years old. You know, kids don't have jobs. Of course, somebody needs help. If they're 21 years old, they've never worked a day in their life. They need help uh, the, getting in. The helicopter parent would come to college with the, the kid and stay there for way too long before the, they'd finally go home. You know, they'd just hover around them on everything they would do when they were supposed to be an adult at that point. Wow, that's worse than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah that's where the term came from. There's more coming up here at 855 453 your thoughts on invasive parenting. Share them with us.
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members for less than $20 per month. Have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of The Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can tell us how you feel about the invasive parenting that we're talking about here, as is being reported on on uh, the excellent website Free Range Kids, the article, Why I Don't Watch What My Kids Are Doing Online. And for some parents, 
This sounds like an unbelievable thing to do. Well, your kids could be getting into trouble online. They could be uh, stealing credit card numbers. They could be watching pornography. They could be doing who knows what. They could be hacking. They could etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There's all kinds of things they could be doing. And apparently a lot of people or parents want to spend their time um, monitoring and rev- uh, revi- or looking over uh, logs of what their, their kids have been doing online. And one lady over at freerangekids.com is saying she doesn't do any of that stuff. And as a result, her kids are more likely to come to her. They're more likely to trust her with the truth about whatever it is that they're doing. We'd love to hear your thoughts. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Uh, Maybe you are a parent or maybe you were someone who was raised in one of these invasive households. How did it make you feel as a teenager having the parent constantly looking over your shoulder? And while the term helicopter parent could certainly mean parents who are likely to hover over their kids at all ages, the Wikipedia article does talk about how the metaphor appeared uh, as early as 1969 in a book called Between, Between Parent and Teenager, which mentions a teen who complains, quote, mother hovers, hovers over me like a helicopter, unquote. But it gained wide currency when American college administrators began using it in the early aughts as the millennial generation began reaching college age. Their baby boomer parents, in turn, earned uh, notoriety for practices such as calling their children each morning to wake them up for class and complaining to their professors about grades that the children had received. So just to give you a couple of examples of how bad, you know, this stuff was. That's I remember we were talking about this probably a decade ago. So we've been doing the show since 2002. And so I remember reading a story about how bad these helicopter parents were giving real life examples from college students. It's ridiculous. You know, I can see why parents get involved. The fact is, is I'm going to be better at uh, putting in a college application than my 17. 70- I remember what it was like when I put in a college application. It was a mess. Right. Uh, it's one thing to sit at home with your with your kid and do a college app, but to call the college professor when your son gets a bad grade, that's does it work inappropriate? If it does work, that's the problem. You mean, does it help with the grades? I, I, right. I imagine the professors are laughing them off the phones. Well, I, let's hope so at this point. Yeah. But the problem is, is that it's worked at some point. Well, I don't know. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, you can join us here in about two months, actually. Two months from now, Keenvention will be happening here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire. It's an intimate occasion. It's about on track. I would say last year, I did a comparison between last year's ticket sales and this year's ticket sales. And I'd say it's, a, it's on par. It's on par this year with last year, so it's probably going to be about a similar size. I'm going to guess around 100 uh, attendees, including uh, lots of great guest speakers from all across New Hampshire. Keenvention focuses on activism. We want to bring activists in to talk about the, the huge activism scene here in New Hampshire. Everything from discussing the legislative process to direct action and more. We'll be announcing more panel discussions here in the upcoming days and weeks. And I'll be uh, just announced the Halloween party last week. Uh, Derek J is organizing the Halloween party slash costume party, which is something we didn't do last year. Last year didn't quite fall on Halloween. It was close, but not quite. And so we're going to do a costume party on Friday night, which will be fun. Plus, as I understand it, karaoke and uh, the bowling party will be coming back as well. So there's going to be social events and there's going to be lots of talk about activism. It's 60 bucks. Get you in for the entire weekend. Obviously, that doesn't include bowling or or drinks and things like that. But 60 bucks for the convention. Uh, it's a great price. And you can also pay for it in Bitcoin. Just go to keenvention.info. You can see what we've announced so far. You can actually go back in time and watch videos from 2013 to see what it was like last year. It was a great time. So please go to keenvention.info and get registered because time's going to run out at some point. We only have 100 tickets that, uh, that are available to be sold prior to the actual event. So our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Other stuff to talk about this evening. I don't know if you've got the Officer Peach story, Daryl, but there was we started out in the the show earlier tonight discussing uh, certain police-related stories. This one's a little unusual. Yeah, so there's a story out of the United Kingdoms of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the story here comes from viralnova.com. It says the law. I hate their headlines. They're just so annoying. All those viral headlines. You must click. Click here. It's awesome. You'll change your life if you click here. Well, it got me to click on the story. (laughs) What was the headline? Uh, The headline is See the hilariously epic response after prosecutors kept requesting a statement from a police dog. All right. 
The law is a tricky beast to tackle. Trials, witnesses, evidence, and precedent are all part of a complicated system that should hopefully result in justice. Sometimes there are misunderstandings and difficult waters to navigate, but what happened in the West Midlands Police Department was absolutely ridiculous. The Crown Prosecution Service, CPS, repeatedly contacted the department, hoping to get an account of an altercation from Officer P.C. Peach. P.C. Peach was unavailable to give a statement, but that did not stop the CPS. Neither did the fact that Officer Peach is a canine. <laughs> frustrations were mounted on each side, or rather, frustrations were mounting on each side, so the department gave in and sent the following statement. P.C. Peach, age 4, <laughs> occupation, PD 4341. I chase him, I bite him, bad man, <laughs> he tasty, good boy, Good boy, Peach. And then there's a paw print for the signature. I love this. Whoever did this is just... It's funny. It's, it's sheer comic genius. Yeah. It gets worse. <laughs> Although it was obviously meant as a joke, the Professional yeah. Standards Department will be investigating the, de the police department for filing a false statement. They had wow. the dog sign it. <laughs> And I mean, so, you know, if Ian wrote something up for me and then I signed it, I must be giving my authentication to that. Uh, sure. I, it sounds like the dog uh, authenticated we it. We read it to him. He put his paw print there. Yeah. There you go. It says, obviously, someone should be examining the prosecutors who could not understand why a German shepherd could not give a statement. That's a great story. Do they actually cite uh, like a mainstream media uh, piece? The UK Metro. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the way the Metro article is written, it's much shorter and not anywhere near as hilarious. Nice. I like the uh, he tasty. <laughs> I chase him. <laughs> oh, I bite no. him. <laughs> Be bad man. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, 855 450 free. That is the, uh, the, the toll free number here. You can bring up anything that you want. Uh, there's an interesting story actually out of Middle East, the Jerusalem Post, jpost.com, where. Iran apparently has the highest total number of internet users in the Middle East, but its average data speed is about the t a tenth of the global average. Huh. An Iranian grand ayatollah has said that high-speed internet is unethical and contrary to humanitarian principles. Hold on. Is this person what? part of the government? Uh, he's an ayatollah. Does that mean he's grand part of the ayatollah. government? A grand ayatollah. It he's is a, a Shia scholar. Yeah, I suspect uh, that he's just covering for the poor internet coverage. He made the remarks in response to a question put to him by cyber activists via his website. Although Iran has the highest total number of internet users, again, its uh, data speed is very slow. However, Shirazi said 3G, third generation mobile communications technology, and broadband internet were morally wrong, and there needed to be standards to prevent users from dangers such as immoral and inhumane videos, photos, rumors, and espionage. I mean, I guess he's got an argument there. This kind of ties back into the conversation about monitoring your kids online. Is that yeah, They're not going to watch porn if they, uh, gonna, if they only have <laughs> yeah, if, Gen 1. Well, yeah, if you've got dial-up internet access and that's it, and you don't have broadband access, it is a lot harder to consume pornography. I mean, it's very difficult to download a video, any video of any significant length, over a regular dial-up modem. So maybe he's got a point if you look at it from that perspective. Uh, he does say it is immoral and inhumane. The comments come after one of Iran's l largest mobile operators, Iransel, announced this month it would be testing 3G services to universities and government offices after Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said this year Iran, Iran should upgrade its Internet services in addition to his conservative stance on the Internet, the Grand Ayatollah, whose ancestors were Jewish converts to Shiite Islam, has also dubbed the Holocaust nothing but superstition. So uh, I'll give you some idea of who uh, we're talking about. So my question is, if you're just like, you know, one kilobyte per second below 3G speed, is that okay? No, probably not. Broadband bad, according to this guy. Yeah, this, this, the problem is he has to rate it kilobytes per second because, I mean, you know, you can get some faster than others. Maybe we need to get him to nail down and give, give us yeah. an exact speed where it becomes immoral. 
W- at once what you point? cross 666 kilobytes per second. Kilobits, I think, is what you mean. Kilobytes, you probably don't have right now. Uh, wh- whatever. The, the, the Ks. All right, we're out of time. See you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Check out Daryl at fpp.cc. Later. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, September 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.45 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $481. Antiwar.com reports, Al-Qaeda's Jabhat al-Nusra has finally issued demands related to the 44 Fijian UN troops they captured late last week in the Syrian Golan Heights, saying they're willing to free them in return for humanitarian aid to be delivered to one of their remaining territorial possessions, a suburb of Damascus called Ruta. The Syrian military has mostly expelled Nusra and other rebels from the areas around Damascus and has conducted protracted sieges on the remaining suburbs to try to force the rebels out of the area surrounding the capital city. Nusra captured the Fijian troops on Friday following their seizing of the Golan crossing between Israel and Syria. The UN has troops in the region to observe a ceasefire that's been in place since 1974. In addition to the Fiji troops, Nusra attacked Filipino troops yesterday, though they managed to escape into Israel without being captured. The UN says they remain unsure of the location or the fate of the Fijian troops. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 The AP reports, the owner of Bikini Coffee Stands in Washington State allegedly banked more than $2 million in the last three years because her baristas were also selling sex acts, according to local